<laughs> oh man. I'll see you in a second. Welcome back again, you guys. Welcome back to YouTube. I'm Jay. I'm the Car Hauling Dispatcher. Man, I'm telling you, this show, this show took me a while to put together. Um, I hope it shows. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't get all my phone testing done. Um, and, in fact, what I really wanted to do, I was hoping to have a... Um, uh, an improvement on my telephone call, you know, system recording audio levels, but maybe next week, you know, I don't have that yet. Uh, but I do want to welcome you back to the show, and actually I think I've got some interesting stuff to talk about tonight. Um, you know that. Okay, if you're new to the show, yeah, it's a long show. So um, you can, you can, you know, you can skip this stuff if you want to move ahead to like the 30 minute mark maybe you know and i don't even have a first interview i didn't even update this screen tonight so i'm gonna talk at about 30 minutes i'm gonna talk i'm the first interview and then at about an hour i'm gonna start talking to uh to drivers about dispatching and stuff we're gonna talk to hopefully two drivers and two dispatchers because i'm talking about what makes dispatching so hard? You saw the thumbnail. Let's take a look at that. What makes dispatching so hard? I mean, that's the question, right? Isn't it easy? Um, it's easy peasy, right? Yeah, it's easy peasy. You just log in, you know, you get up, you wake up in the morning, you get your coffee, and, you know, maybe log in, check Facebook, read some news, get some more coffee, you know, and, you know, clear the beer bottles out of the way. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and maybe by mid-morning, maybe log in. But, you know, you only just got to hit a couple buttons and the gold bars come flying and then you just go back to bed, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly how it is. It's just easy peasy. Because um, the reasons why it's so easy are that everything pays so well and everything's always ready and the information's so accurate and it's just, it's wonderful. So um, since there's nothing to even talk about, just go ahead and skip ahead to like, well, skip ahead to the end and then, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you do. If you're new to the show tonight, uh, you may just want to kick back and skip around or watch watch all of it, watch some of it, because I know that the, I've got the diehard listeners out there driving and listening. And listen, you guys, I click a few buttons and you're done. It's true. It's so true. Um, I've been dispatching for six years, and so this sh this 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 shizzle this show is six years in the making my friends so i want to say hello to some folks um hey roxy auto transport welcome to the show and man i hope to improve some audio i hope to do that i'm going to get something in the mail here in a few days we'll see if that helps uh the one and only what's up man welcome back to the show one and only and um yeah man and you guys are already saying hello to each other because this is a community this is a, uh, I think of it as a saloon, okay? So so we're in a saloon, and I'm over kind of by the piano, 
and I'm talking, but guys are saddling up to the bar because the workday is done, everything's easy peasy, and we're all just having mugs of beer, and you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like the Wild West. Uh, Blackout Car Carriers, how is everybody doing? Welcome to the show, Blackout Car Carriers. Awesome. Thank you for joining the show tonight. I do appreciate that. Um, Mark from Trucking Answers is here. Hello, man. Welcome to to the show and glad to see you. This is episode 45. Can you believe it? Live show 45 uh, in a row on a Tuesday night. Uh, man, that's awesome. I'm so excited. Uh, Brian the Car Hauler is here. Welcome, Brian the Car Hauler. Pull Dog is in the house. What's up, Pull Dog? Welcome back to the show. Um, yeah, man, I think you're going to enjoy uh, talking about how easy dispatching is. It's so easy, simple. Uh, click mix mix for fortune, dude. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Um, I appreciate that so much. In fact, I've come up with a new slogan, auto transport Intel, actual pickup, actual delivery. So, um, you know what? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to open up the shirts. I got my first round of shirts. I'm going to open those up here shortly. Um, cause I got to create teasers somehow. I got to create teasers, you know, gosh, what's going to happen? Is he really going to talk about dispatching? I don't know. He might not, honey. Um, and, in fact, what I'm going to do, too, is, you know, I backed off on the Super Chats. Um, but, you know, if you, if you Super Chat me. So I got this mug here. This is pretty cool. This, my, my Auto Transport Intel mug is, um, tonight is full of dispatcher complaints. Um, now, what I did was I asked dispatchers to go ahead and tell me why it's not easy peasy what's wrong what's happening out there and i got a mug full of, of of problems i got a i got a mug full of problems um let's move this and let's do this we know we know that um and i got this background this is a um this is a copart i don't know where i don't know where this is but this is a uh, this is a copart i believe it's in the uh I believe it's in the Midwest, right? Near the Rockies and stuff. So, anyways, um, if you super chat me, I'll go straight to the mug of problems, and we'll do that. So, there's another teaser. I don't know. I got to create... The pro YouTubers say I got to create teasers. Let's see. What else we got? What's... Oh, what's up, DP Dispatch? Okay, we're going to be talking to Davison uh, a little bit later. Ernest Martin is back. Welcome back to the show, Ernest. It's good to see you here. Um, oh, M Fields. Hey, Jay, it probably, uh, it's key from exclusive. That's right. Thanks again for the info and help. Thanks for the show. I'm the man. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and, um, yeah, I'm the, uh, I'm the master of none. Okay. Cause I'm a dispatcher, man. I got, I got nothing over here. That's why I made a show. I, I got to talk to somebody. Um, so, hey, Jay, the recent rise and shine. Oh, you like that? Oh, man. Yeah. You know, um, Again, I got my mug of problems here. Go ahead and super chat me. Um, I got the mug, right? And I love coffee. I don't have any coffee here because I don't drink coffee after 4 o'clock. Otherwise, I can't sleep. And as a dispatcher, I already have trouble sleeping. And I dream about dispatching and loads and failure. But, um, yeah, I, I thought, you know, I love drinking coffee. And I love the mug. And I love eggs. And then I thought, man, I'm going to make this commercial, and then I'm going to have, like, chicken lovers all over me. You've seen, like, the vegans chasing down the trucks of chickens. But then I thought, you know what? Vegans probably don't watch my show. So, yep. And then I booked another car. Or at least I failed to do so. So, all right, this is about what makes dispatching so hard. I keep saying that. So, and I, and I obviously welcome to the show. And so let's go ahead and... Do you guys want to do, do we, do we start with, do we, st I, where's my, like I said, you know what, I got, I got a, I got a late start on this show, see I don't even have a, uh, let's add the video capture box to this, there we go, um, do you guys want me to start with what makes dispatching so hard, or should we start with industry news? Let's do another teaser. Let's take a vote. <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta increase the, the pro YouTubers. Tell me, I gotta increase my interaction. I gotta get more likes, more subscribers, more comments. Literally, I'm told that this channel isn't growing. 
Now, it looks like it's growing, but according to Morning Fame, which is a pro YouTuber, my channel's not growing. So, I don't know, man. Go figure. No way, Ernest Martin. Ernest Martin's in the house. Ernest Martin. Well, here we go, man. What we're going to do here in the Super Chat tonight is we're going to do... Um, it, so, if you, if you do the Super Chat, I'm going to go straight to the mug of problems. We'll, we're going to do... For every five dollars, we're gonna we're gonna open up a problem. All right, and I got man, this thing's full. I got a lot of problems in here. Um, so this is real dispatcher stuff. All right, let's do it. Let's see what we got here. Ernest gets four problems. All right, and I'll just set it down here. Right, let's see here. Can I put it here so you can see my mug of problems? All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, you can't read it. All right, well, I'm just going to read it anyways. Sorry you need more ratings on Central. <laughs> like, that's what the broker says. Oh, here, am I, am, I, am I straight here? The broker... Oh, it's hot in here. The broker actually says, Sorry, you need more ratings on Central. Then there is no... There's no way out of that. Well, all you... You just say... What do you say? What do you say? What's going on, Jay and family? What's up, Dominic? Man, thanks for coming back to the show. What do you say to a broker that says you need more ratings on Central? Does anybody have an answer to that? I don't know what you say. Sorry you need more ratings on Central. Um, I don't know, man. I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm going to get another problem. Ernest, let me know. What do you say? Can you buy ratings? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. Can you? But you know what? You know what's funny is, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. It's just hot in here. Um, you know why it's so hot? The computers have been on all day. I got, I got five screens. Freaking out with five screens. It makes this room hot as heck. Um, can you buy ratings? No. But when you go on Facebook and you ask for ratings, guess what people do? They come down on you. They criticize you. They insult you. Well, guess what? Without ratings, you can't even book a car. Stinks, man. Can you buy ratings? It's ridiculous. It is. Oh, you want industry news, Roxy? All right, I got three more problems, and then it's industry news. Your company don't have much, so I'm worried. Well, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So, so that's that's fun as well. Along with all the other problems, I got three more problems for you, Ernest. Oh, this one's big. Here we go. We got a big problem here. All right. What can we do today to earn your business? That's a good, nice, nice. I should be taking notes, man. What can we do to earn your business? That is really good. All right, COD is great, but if that's all you want to do, you won't make much money, and I don't make enough to spend all day hoping I find COD loads. I don't make money searching for miracles all day that don't exist. <laughs> it is hard. When your driver wants COD loads, that is hard. It's not as hard as not having any ratings, but, uh, I mean, you can search for COD loads, but, I mean, what are the chances that you, what are the chances that you can find the right load that fits on the route and pays COD, man, that's not, and pays good? That is not, yeah, thanks, Brian, that is a good one. That is not, that's not easy. Thank you, Ernest, we got two more problems. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Boy, oh boy, do I got a mug o oh, problems. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can read this one. <laughs> I'm not your bookkeeper and bill collector. Oh man, I can't. I think that's the. Uh, that would be the dispatcher talking to the driver. Which I mean, that's it is a problem because. As the dispatcher, you don't get paid until the driver gets paid. And that's understandable. But, like, when are you going to pay? I mean, what, you know, how do you collect? Or can you keep track? Did you send your BOL? Did you send your invoice? Am I supposed to send your invoice? I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. That's very opinionated, and it's going to offend a lot of people. And we don't want to offend people. Because what happened? Oh, brother, Here's this one fell out. We're taking that one. All right. We got... What is this? Everyone thinks you should wor only work for them, yet no one wants to pay you... Oh, yeah, okay. Everyone thinks you should only work for them, yet no one wants to pay you enough to only work for them. Yeah, that is a good one. 
That is a good one. Because, um, in fact, I think that one made the top ten. Because you can't, you can't make, um, you can't make enough money working for only one driver. You know, what's the analogy there? Um, you can't, what, you can't haul for only one broker? I don't know, but as a dispatcher, you need several drivers to make enough money because you can only charge so much before you lose their business. So that is a tough one. That is a, that's a quandary, is what they say. All right, so Ernest, you got four problems. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, YouTube takes 30%, which blows. But you know what? Hey, man, without their platform, my super chat would be zero. So, um, and uh, let's see here. All right, let's go to, let's go to some industry news. And remember, if you super chat, it's five bucks for a mug of problems. Okay, that's ridiculous. Okay, I'm not, I, I need to stop listening to those pro YouTubers, man. This is making a terrible show. Okay. What do we got here? <laughs> Who says trucking is stressful? I'm 34 and I feel great. Yeah, dude. What about sums it up for me? Uh, what else we got? Who says driving a truck is stressful? I'm 42 and I feel great. That should be the dispatcher. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see here. You said we're only working half a day. Half a day is 12 hours. <laughs> I like, I like those cinematic memes like this one. Like, who, who does that? Who cuts up frames of a movie and makes a meme? I don't know, but I like it. It's pretty cool. And you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm not, this isn't just dispatchers. This is everybody in auto transport. I bet your brokers, most of them work 12 hours a day and i i know a few brokers now which i know is crazy um i know carriers well you can drive we're not going to get into that we're not going to get into eld all right let's move on um okay yeah that's pretty cool is that where the customer lives uh-huh no problem easy peasy yeah that wasn't on the dispatch sheet was it Okay, did anybody call on that one? Anybody check on that? Pretty sure. Happy driver. This pre-trip thing sucks. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, to all you 62 mile an hour. <laughs> um, when you see me coming in the hammer lane, you need to get out of the way. That's a pretty good one. I like that. It, you know, McDonald's memes are funny. It's funny. Hey, Snowman, how's that load of straws coming along for California? Good, Bandit. We are westbound and down, loaded up and trucking. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about straws, right, in the news. The straw ban. It's weird, right? Um, I mean, we got to protect, you know, the oceans, and, and you've, you've heard about the Texas... Larger than Texas, size pile of garbage in the ocean. I don't know. This isn't a political show, man. We're going to move on. We're just going to move on. Toll roads, because the government hasn't already stolen enough of your money through taxation. <laughs> that is so true, man. Toll roads, dude. Because you, I, I've heard that even once the toll amount collects whatever the original goal was do they take away the toll no no that's how government works that's how, why it never gets smaller government never gets smaller i just heard that our uh was it our deficit is a trillion dollars now a year like that's just standard minimum and we're two years ahead of schedule on the deficit on <laughs> on incurring a trillion dollar deficit uh, why doesn't brokers compensate drivers when they have the wrong location? That's a great question. You know, nobody wants to pay for anything. And actually, thank you for, um, you know what, one and only, I'm really glad you asked that. Why am I doing a show about dispatchers? Okay, I know. Because I'm running a risk. You know what risk I'm running here? I'm running the risk. Who cares? Right? Who cares? Uh, what? Who, ca who cares? Okay, well, and I just moved it. The reason I'm bringing this up, you know, it occurred to me. We're all, we're all very interested in when somebody else creates a problem for us. 
Like, let's say you're on the road and the traffic is a problem because somebody had to flip their car and why don't they drive safe? Well, don't we wish they were thinking about us, right? And, you know, as you start, that's where you start. And then we realize, gosh, we don't think about other people enough. And I, and I realized as a dispatcher early on, you know what? I don't know what the broker's problems are. The broker doesn't realize what my problems are. I don't know if the dro driver knows what my problems are. And as I started to expand that argument, I started to think, which is why I came up with this graphic. Let's go to this graphic. Um, where is it? Um, yeah, this one. See, it starts with the car shipping customers, right? What makes auto transport so hard? You know the car shipping customer doesn't get it. They, they're like, you know, why, why can't you just be here at 2 so I can make my hair appointment at 2.30? And you try to explain to them why you can't be there at 2. And they're like, oh my gosh, but I was promised, I was guaranteed, easy peasy. Well, that was stupid. Why were you guaranteed easy peasy? No, man, I can't guarantee that I'll be there at 2. I can't even guarantee we'll be there today. Well, what in the world? And then there's a freak out session that lasts 20 minutes. So, I, I want to help shipping customers understand that anybody who tells you guaranteed promise or easy peasy, hey, they just straight up lied to you. It's not like that. Now, who did that? Who said easy peasy? Right? But, I mean, not all customers will believe that garbage, and not all brokers will say that stuff. Okay? But... It does happen. Somebody, somebody's saying it somewhere. Maybe the customer thinks they heard that. Maybe the broker did say that. Or maybe the carrier actually let them say that. Not nah, come on, that's not true. The carrier didn't let them say that. The problem starts here. It has to. Or, or the problem starts here. Because they think, you know, everything keeps moving towards quicker, faster, easier, right? Now you got Uber Eats. Now you don't even have to go to McDonald's. You can just hire a robot car to go to the robot location and everybody eats and it's easy peasy. Of course, that, that burger costs like 50 bucks. But the, so the, the McDonald's burger costs 50 bucks, but you wanna move a car for 50 bucks. So what happened? Why is there such a disconnect of Dude, you're moving a car. You're moving this thing that you're so wrapped up in, but you can't understand why it doesn't cost more than an Uber burger. I don't know, man. And again, that's why we are going to get into why or what what makes brokering so hard. We're going to do that show soon. Too. We're going to we're going to also do what makes car hauling so hard, right? Because it's all in here. There's these, these problems, man, this is going around. And who's in the middle? Who's caught in the middle? The dispatcher's caught in the middle. Now, did the dispatcher tell the shipping customer it'd be easy peasy? No. That did not happen. Let me tell you. The, the dispatcher's the one that has to break the bad news to the customer. Because somebody along the way told him it was a piece. It's a pizza. It's an easy pizza pizza. And so that's why... We are talking about, oh, that, that didn't come out too well. But that's why we're talking about the dispatchers, okay? Because I, I really, I want, I realize this is the ecosystem. And there's actually more. I mean, I could blot this page with insurance agents and trailer manufacturers and, and bankers and, you know, all kinds of people. I mean, there's this ecosystem's huge. But when I break it down... Uh, from sitting at my desk, this is pretty much what I'm what I'm looking at. And since I personally know the pain of the dispatcher the best, that's where I'm starting. And that was the impetus for this show. And there you go. So that's why we're talking about what makes transport so hard. I'm seeing I, as I say on my own switcher. Uh, oh man, where's my graphic? There. What makes dispatching so hard? All right. So, I mean, I don't know. Is it the broker? Is it the customer? Is it the carrier? Is it me? Is it... <laughs> I think it's me. All right, so let's go back to... That was interesting, Jay. Um, let's go back to industry news. Oh, man, I, I'm, I'm telling you what. I'm, I'm Just like I'm, I'm begging that broker for another 25 bucks. I'm so excited about the next Super Chat. 
to call up the conjure up the mug of problems. I got so many problems in here. Oh man, I can't wait to talk about more problems. All right, let's get to some industry problems. Um, there you go. There's a problem. Why and why do you why are you stuck in that position, right? <laughs> why are you stuck in that position? <laughs> that is that is ridiculous. Okay, when you burn a shower credit, <laughs> man, I get these off of Facebook. You know, you guys know I get this stuff off of Facebook, and it and it cracks me up when I put it all together. You know, one at a time, it's pretty funny, but when I make the whole string together, oh man, it cracks me up. And I know I can't be alone because, man, what a marching cat! How proud of <laughs> used up his shower credit. Oh my gosh. And, you know, again, car shipping customers don't even know what are we talking about. What we're talking about is that your drivers are on t such a tight schedule with their ELDs and everything else and trying to make it for your hair appointment that they have literally got to find ways to cut any corner possible. And, you know, if that means, you know, spending a couple bucks just to, for, for a little privacy. Did you guys see the doorknob on this picture? I thought that was pretty funny. The caption's all right, but I love the doorknob. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Nothing like a nothing like a good custom doorknob. Okay. Um, you know, um, you guys know that. Uh, oh, what's that? Uh, what's that saying? Was it Kelly Pickler, that singer that likes to sing about leather seats and getting her knife out and carving up seats because he cheats and all that? Yeah, that's that's. What I always think, I think it's Kelly Pickler, but I don't know. Anybody know who that singer is? Oh, man. It's probably several. I think Cardi B's doing that act now. I don't know. Cardi B. Okay. I'm writing this for all new drivers. Some advice. Don't use dispatchers, especially the ones on this page. It's a scam. I think I found that in Hot Shot Trucking Life, which is hilarious because, um, I mean... Yeah, you know, that's the thing. We just keep generalizing each other. Um, you know, new driver or new new dispatchers think drivers are X. And brokers think drivers are, are Y and dispatchers are Z. And it just keeps going around. Um, in fact, there was a really heinous uh, Facebook post from a upset car shipping customer. And um, I, try, I, I, try, I looked into it. I tried to help. I guess I couldn't help. I don't know. I lost contact with the person. But um, their car was listed five times on Central Dispatch by five brokers. Oh, my gosh. Man, that's just a horrible situation. Carrie Underwood. Thank you. I'm going to read a problem because you got that. Thank you. All right, here we go. Here, let's do another problem. Yeah? Yeah, you think dispatchers are a scam? Well, how about this? I'm not your fleet manager or compliance officer. You can't read that. There's no way. Do you guys know that uh, two-thirds of my audience is on a cell phone? Yeah, that's that's no lie right there. Two-thirds of my audience is on a cell phone. You can't read that on a cell phone. Here we go. I'm not your fleet manager and compliance officer. So there you go. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Oh, that's for Carrie Underwood. Take that, Carrie Underwood. Okay. That is crazy. Okay. What else we got? Um, Central Dispatch needs to make broker pay for putting up false ads that might make it stop. Yeah, right. Yeah, because Central Dispatch works so hard to help carriers. Right on. Didn't miss it. Didn't get the notification either. Oh, you didn't get the... Di oh, man. You know what's interesting? I, uh, I don't know when that notification happens but i'll tell you what try this sergeant and i appreciate you joining the show too man and um um make sure you tap the notification bell to never miss a video so i don't know if that helps hey what's up new age trucker thanks for joining the show you had a video in today um that's what i hate about trucking something like that that was pretty good um you know we have so much bad stuff to talk about don't we um uh, what what I also said <laughs> oh that's hilarious okay paul's being funny guys 
All right, let's move on since we don't want to get into uh, the scammer dispatchers. Caption that. I don't know what you'd say. Actually, I have no, I, I don't have anything to say, but I find it to be an interesting picture. And I try to, I'm trying to imagine how that happens. I mean, where did it, did it happen in a parking lot? It didn't happen on the highway. It probably happened at Copart. Probably at the customer's house because you were late for the hair appointment. She starts throwing tools in the driveway. That's not even funny. Crappy maps. <laughs> Dude, totally. Oh my gosh, I had a crappy maps moment today. Like, I clicked on it. I, cl I went to Central. I'm looking at the load. And I clicked, like, route map or whatever. And it just went to bad gateway. <laughs> that, they should call it bad gateway maps. Roger that. Done and done. Uh, yeah, okay, cool, man. Awesome. Thank you. And, uh, guys, do me a favor. Um, if you haven't liked this video yet, and you are liking it, please give it a like. And also, when you watch, uh, if you go back in my archive and you start watching videos, uh, please remember to give those a like. That really helps in the rankings. Some of my videos are ranking really high, and some are, like, just, like, slow burns. And it's really hard to know what's going to happen. Did you see the excitement on the video before? Yeah, I did. He ran from the police. He ended up, he ended up next to me, and they shot at him. Oh my gosh! They shot at him, and he was next to you. That's crazy. Oh, Brandon Smith commented on a photo on Hot Shot Trucking Live. That is crazy, man. Oh, that's that is nice. I did. I watched in the video. What's interesting is you're watching the aftermath. We all know what lots of cop lights look like, and so we're really dying to to see the actual footage. What's interesting now too is because there's so much like actual craziness footage that if we don't get the actual craziness footage we feel you know like we almost empty like oh i'm late to the party uh speaking of <laughs> there's the actual that's actual i mean that's that's an actual con that that is actually happening right there <laughs> you dumb <laughs> oh my gosh what do you do that's awful right as a dispatcher as a carrier as a broker the whole everybody's freaking out that's that's a bad day right there man that's a beautiful car it was uh, why doesn't central allow brokers to add photos to the listing to help with in ops that's a great well, well why would they but well, you know the price is gonna have to go up i mean that's that's like another 50 bucks a month in programming right there sheesh well i, I mean you know you wanted to pay 200 a month for your little pictures Paul, okay, having fun. Can't he read the low bridge sign? Well, you know what's next. And there you have it, low bridge. Because they tried to tell you, and that's a 58 bet? Yeah, man, 58, dang, thing's beautiful. Um, so yeah. So there's the low bridge sign. I don't know which one's better. This <laughs> would you rather have this or this? Probably, I don't know. Probably that. Has he hit anything yet? Um hmm. Yeah, I mean he's gonna. How did the guy shoot that anyways? I guess he stopped. The hard way. Speaking of, there's another there's another stop in the hard way. This is man, that's Manhattan, dude. As if Manhattan wasn't hard enough. And then you gotta hit a scaffolding. And why? What? Because you know what? Probably avoiding a person? I don't know. It doesn't say. That, although that taxi is right there, so you know. A taxi road rage deal? What's this one all about? A GM single handedly took down a Ford. That's pretty funny. That's not funny. That's why insurance rates keep going up. Uh, still running Windows 98. <laughs> Who, me? Probably. Um, dang, that has to be... Yeah, exactly. That was listed as a small sprinter. Yeah, there you go. That's a good point, Paul. Exactly. Exactly. You know that, right? It was listed, listed as a small sprinter... Get there after the fact. Yeah, probably. 
Um, and then you just want to do that. You just that that's just the way. Let's go ahead and you know what? I'm out of time on my ELD, and I'm having a you know this run sucks. I'm not making any money. Boom. ELD Kool Aid. You know that. Okay. All right. Let's see what's next. Oh, buckle up, Kiki. Stay in your car. Oh my gosh. Some of the Kiki videos have been insane. And now they're just getting really weird. In fact, I think they're getting a little unpredictable, which is the point. But I think some people have really hurt themselves in those videos. So I don't know, man. It's like, what do, you, what do we have to do now? Go tell our kids to not make Kiki videos? Who saw that coming? You should have planned for that. Somebody needs to rename the group to Hot Shots Looking for Loads. <laughs> instead of instead of Hot Shot Trucking Life. Hot shots looking for loads. Seriously, there's a lot of load talk. It's, you know, it's because it's pretty messed up out there. It's, right? So, well, you know, why why hire a car hauler? Let's do this thing. Send it. What else we got? I'm not even worried about the time. Dude, it's 8.38. I haven't even... I'm not even worried about it. Uh, put the phone down. That is a pretty good idea. That is a really good idea. Uh, bad day in 60 seconds. No central. It's that. Is that why no photo? Yeah, man. If we had, if there were photos, then there'd be somebody to blame. But this way, <laughs> forget that. Uh, you can make money with ELD if you sell ELDs. There you go. The only good thing about ELD is selling them. That's why. Here we go. Get yours now on the Easy Peasy Egg Timer ELD. That's right. It's super easy. Just put in your minutes and start. There you go. Oh, we don't want to do that. Need more time? Just add more hours. No problem. Our ELD works, and it'll let you know when the eggs are done. So that's awesome. Easy peasy. There you go. What else we got here? Um, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Already drank it. Man, I already, man, I already drank the Kool-Aid. Um, sounds sexual. What does? <laughs> Florida. Okay, put the phone down. Let's see what else we got here. Um, that's interesting. Super trucker. Right? People like to say, people love to say super trucker. It's like a thing. Super trucker, it's a thing. Um, oh, this is actually, I thought this was a pretty smart idea. The vet said the anti-scratch cone is 50 bucks. Tractor Supply had it for $19.95. That's pretty funny, man. I know, it's a little off. It's a little off, but, you know, dogs are, a lot of people have car hauling dogs. Um, here's your kitchen. That's pretty good, right? You guys know the truck and kitchen? Hot loads sound sexual. Hot loads. Who said hot loads? Um, that would be the best thing LED ever if you could just add hours. Sure you can add hours. It's easy peasy. See? I'm adding hours. And go. Yep. <sighs> easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Okay. Now I'm guessing uh, that's not uh, up to code. I'm guessing that's not even in the U.S. But you never know. I don't know where that is. Um. Let's see here. I saw a crazy video of like in India they were putting a, 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 a excavator on on like a set of axles. Uh, that's a great way to lose a hand, man. And this is actually really cool. I want to know more about this. It doesn't sound like there were many, very many of those made. Wow. That's impressive. So, did you guys see that on Facebook? That was really pretty cool. Really cool. Uh, out here trying to decide which path to take in life. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up for me sometimes. Just being able to hit pause would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty funny comment. 
Does owner operator get paid deadhead when hauling cars for dealerships? Really? That's the question. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and read one of these. See if we can. I, I have a feeling the universe will give us the answer. I doubt it. All right. Let's see. Let's go to the. Let's go to the. Can I get to the big screen here? Let's go to the big screen. We got. Oh wow. Can you read that? Nope. Nope. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, it never ends, is what it says. It never ends. That's just, that's it. That's the message. It never ends. Ain't that the truth? It never ends. Okay. Uh, let's look at this photograph for, oh, hey, you can't see it. Let's go to that. Let's look at this photograph for a sec. Um, and by the way, the driver says this should, this, if you look close, that used to be a four-door Chevy pickup. Wow. Talk about understanding each other, all right? Right? It's not easy. Peasy. It's not easy. Jeez, what are you doing? It's not easy to uh, have the kind of empathy and understanding that it takes out on the road. I mean, we, we see it every day. I don't know how you guys drive, honestly, with the way people drive out there. It's unbelievable. And I, I'm, I'm going to say, even in Kansas City, I'm in Kansas City, so many people drive so bad, so rude and unbelievable. How is that possible? This is the Midwest. It's supposed to be, like, chill and, like, friendly why are people driving like this? What is going on? Oh my God. That's pretty much how I gauge society now is by the way people drive. And I know, like, we all feel that way, so who's driving this way? Because I'm telling you, I do not drive like a bat out of hell and just changing lanes and it's crazy. I mean, what is going on? Oh, the good old days, right? The good old days, man. Let's see what else we got in here. Some of those trucks and routes in India are insane. I know it is insane. Um, is that a compact module? Yeah, it is now. So it's, it's like an electric car. Uh, what else we got here? Oh man, you guys ever watch that show, man? Speed Racer, dude. I think Speed Racer is probably responsible for at least one car hauler on the road. Guaranteed. That is, man, the Mach 9 or Mach 5? Dude, that's amazing. Um, if you can only go to one of these for the rest of your life, which one would it be? So, yeah, I mean, you know, you pick a... What's your favorite rest stop? I, I've heard that... I've heard some people say they love... They actually love loves... You know, loves, and I think pilots are nice sometimes. That the TA and Petro are the bottom two. That's what I've heard. What do you guys think? What's your favorite truck stop? Um, 65, 66 Mustangs. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? I know, man. That's awesome, dude. Those were the days, man. Yeah, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Um, RIP Starkey Ford. Yeah, speaking of those days. And you know that that's another, I think that's another contributor to the, uh, when we talk about the ecosystem issue, is that what happened to all the mom and pop shops? I actually, I was talking to my boys last weekend about what mom and pop shops were. They didn't even know really what I was talking about. Because it's all just major conglomerate corporations now where the guy on top buys a golden umbrella stand every weekend and everybody else is starving. <laughs> that was rosy. That was a rosy picture, Jay. Thank you. Feel so much better. What a comedy act. Uh, wow, a driver asked for more money and the broker stated he couldn't pay more. But had no problem 
asking the driver to collect a $1,384 broker fee. More than the payment to the carrier for $1,200. I hate how this program does that. Stay there. Is there something wrong with this picture? All right. So, I mean, there's the, there's the central dispatch listing right there. I asked them for more money. They said no, that they couldn't pay any more. When I got it assigned, I saw that I just had to cancel. I had a load like that one time. I've had I've had a few where I just had to straight up cancel. I can't do it. I, I called, It was there was a major broker, and I called, and I talked to the to the owner, and I, I think he was like, you know, who do you think you are talking to me like this? And I said to him, you know, I did book the, I booked this car, and I asked for more money, and I was given a long song and dance about no more money, and I, I was able to squeak another hundred out, I think. But even, even after all that, then when I got the dispatch, like 800 went to the carrier, but the driver was picking up 1600 on delivery and giving another eight to the broker. After all this argument of no money and crying and weeping and begging and tears, and I said to the owner of the company, you know, you, you shouldn't do this. And he said, hey, you took the dispatch. I mean, that's your problem now. And I said, you know, I understand how, you know, that you're just going to go ahead and say that because this is capitalism and, you know, every man for himself and all this stuff. But do you understand that, you know, if your sales guys are that good and you guys are this cutthroat, how about not let the driver know how much you screw people and just have the customer pay you on a credit card so you just... The carrier doesn't have to see this. I mean, can you do that? I mean, clearly, if you're able to screw people so well, can't you include the customer in that screwing process? <laughs> you know, whatever. whatever. I'm sure the guy was like, you know, are you, know, are you okay? You know, do you, maybe you need to take a chill pill, buddy. I think I'm going to go to the mug of problems. Anybody... Anybody want to hear another dispatcher? Right? Who cares? You know what? Who cares about the stinking dispatcher problems? I got all kinds of problems. Oh, you said you ran a legal logbook, but driving 14 hours down the road proved that was a lie. So there you go. Right? Oh, my e look, my see, my ELD actually works. Easy peasy. 1999. That's right. 1999. Easy peasy. I'm telling you, man. Oh, okay. And that's my last industry news frame because now, now we're just going to go straight up into what makes dispatching so hard. I knew, I knew, I knew it would take me a while to get to this point. Um, let's see what else we got. Let's read some before I start on this. Got the scroll. I got the logo. Oh, that's right. Before we get to this, I want to show you guys. I want to show you guys something. Let's go ahead and do this. Look at this. These are the new t-shirts. You guys want to see the new t-shirts? Who wants to see a new t-shirt? What else we got? I'm going to read some before I before I open the shirts. Um, let's see. Uh, Loves has the best points to the drivers, I think. But we have to use flying hook and <laughs> flying hook. <laughs> That's pretty funny, man. Petro's got Starbucks. Oh, there you go. See, man? Five bucks for coffee, $25 for transport. Awesome. Uh, lo, what happened to mom and pop? The fuel card discounts killed them. Yeah, well, I put it on the list. That's right. Makes me want to go ahead and build out my website and run SEO. Yeah, man. Let's all become internet spammers. Howdy. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Welcome to the show, man. If you haven't already liked, please give a like. I've never given them more than 200 when I do their fee. Yeah, no, really. And and that's I mean, if you're going to if you're going to get more than 200, do, don't have the driver pay you. Don't do that, man. That guy's telling me $800 reasonable. That's ridiculous. Uh maybe send it but add a $1000 fee for processing. There you go. See, getting creative. All right, let's do some t-shirts, okay? Let's do this. This is a this is a world remember remember MTV videos this is a world premiere of brand new oh here we go 
Oh, we got care instructions here. All right. This, these are brand new auto transport Intel shirts. Oh man. Wow. These are the road worker yellow. Wow. Wow. Is that bright? Okay. If I hold it back here. Okay. You see how bright it is. Oh wow. They're falling over. And then, so, um, what I did was it's road worker yellow. So then I did alert today, alive tomorrow on the back. So, um, yeah, auto transport Intel and it's road worker yellow so that you'll be, see if I can throw that over me or right, let's do this. Go ahead and take that off. Let's put this sucker on. Let's see if uh, these are going to be a little big. Um, but I ordered it for, I got, uh, I got a few drivers. Let's go ahead and put this hat back on because I like the hat. It's part of my uh, thing, you know. You got the auto transport Intel hat, says dispatcher. Oh, yeah, that's sweet, dude. So, um, so anyways, yeah, these are the road worker yellow shirts. Let's go ahead and look at, oh, now my, uh, look at me, now my, um, my lighting's all out of whack because I got my road worker yellow shirt on. I might have to take this off. But I'll just say this now is that um, this is the shirt right here, the Auto Transport Intel Road Worker Yellow shirt. Um, you know, I got the channel support packages. I have been asked to um, give some consultations, and I've also been asked um, how you can support the channel. And you can do that by, you know, I've got four packages here. I got the Gate Pass. I got the Greenhorn. I got the Mix Mix. And I got the VIP. So um, if you need a consultation, if you want to, if you want reasons why not to get into car hauling, uh, go ahead and choose package one or two. And if you want to help support Auto Transport Intel on this journey and educating, you know, I got the car hauling ecosystem here, all right? customer, uh, carrier, dispatcher, and broker. We're going to be talking to everybody so you can help support this channel. Uh, the best deal is the VIP. You get one of these shirts. You're going to get this fancy mug. I got these fantastic business cards up here too. I know. Why would... Now, wait a minute, Jay. If I'm giving you money and you're giving me business cards, I know. We'll talk about it. But anyways, I do have the products and um, that is how you can contribute to the channel. And I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Oh, and you'll, if you do the VIP, you come on a future show. And also in the consultations, there's all kinds of stuff we're going to talk about. I haven't had a consultation yet where they weren't thrilled at the end of all of the information. We talk about anything you want. We're going to go off into tangents, highways, and all kinds of side roads too. So, um, okay. I talked about that. And yeah, I do. I like this shirt a lot, man. Um, what do you, let's see. Cool threads. Cool. Nice. Want my hat to say carrier. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be making, I've got other hats I'm working on. Um, like I said, what we're going to do is the next, this, these are the only three shirts that say uh, um, alert today, alive tomorrow. The next round is going to be actual pickup, actual delivery. Because that is another... Why, why do I say that, guys? Anybody ever heard that? Anybody know why I would say actual pickup, actual delivery? Um, but if you... Yeah, and if you have a shirt, if you have words you want it to say, let me know. Like car the carrier hat, that's a great idea. I should have the dispatcher hat, the carrier hat, broker hat, and uh, customer hat. And I got to get my hair done hat. Um, where's the number five KC barbecue? Number five KC barbecue. Well, I had to say carrier. What, what does that mean? Number five KC barbecue. I'm really curious what you mean, man. Let's go to the, um, let's go to, before we get into the top 10 reasons. I know this is a little different show. This is a different show. Um, but, oh, by the way, yeah. That is the world, right? It's good to, you know what? It's good to zoom out on the globe once in a while and think about everybody else. And then, you know, because how often do you do that? How often are you thinking about 
uh, Sweden, Poland, Germany, France, Spain, Portugal, Morocco. Right? Nah, you know, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about me and my car and my hair appointment and my guarantee and my easy peasy. One through four packages. Oh, I see. Number five, KC Barbecue. That's an interesting idea. So we should have a package number five with KC Barbecue. We could have lunch. Ooh, that's a great idea, man. You know what we could do is, um, let's do this. Let's add, I'm going to update this right now. Let's do five KC Barbecue. What we'll do, let's see, number five. Uh, oh, here we go. Five KC Barbecue. So what we'll do is we'll add that there. And on the number five KC Barbecue, I don't know how much it costs there. But, yeah, I know, man. Oh, my gosh. I love the barbecue in KC. It's great. By the way, I got it, man. My lighting... If, if the lighting looks terrible, I'll go back to the other shirt. Otherwise, I'll leave the shirt on. You guys let me know. Somebody tell me what to do. Um, if we do KC... I've done KC Barbecue with a couple drivers here. And we went and had... Um, oh, what's the name of it? Oh, gosh. What's the name of that barbecue place? Honey, what's that barbecue place we went to? Uh, Jack Stack. Yeah, we go to Jack Stack and Martin City. All right. We're going to go to Jack Stack and Martin City. So if you do the number five KC barbecue, um, you're buying. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and what? You get a beer koozie and some business cards? That's a pretty good idea. Actually, I want to do beer koozies. In fact, I'm glad you said that, Paul, because I want to know what other merchandise would you guys want me want to see me uh, pedal? Um... Yeah, but we could have barbecue and shoot a video. I've actually got some video that I need to uh, edit of uh, lunch that I had. It's not it's not the, it's not as eating lunch, but um, we eat barbecue. Go get some Jack Stack. Oh, you can't see it. Here, let's do this. Go get some Jack Stack, and um, man, I'm telling you, you know what the um, the uh, the beef brisket. Oh man, that their, their brisket is awesome. And their pork ribs are awesome. Oh my gosh! You do the. Uh... Oh, I'm getting. I'm... Oh my gosh! This is making me too hungry. I can't. I can't look at this. I gotta switch away. Um. Yeah, let's do that. But yeah, we could do the number five. We could do the KC barbecue. We'll have lunch, shoot a video, put in some merchandise. That'd be great. I don't know what it costs. Um. But um. But it ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? Car covers, key tags. Ooh, car covers. Oh, yeah. You know what? I know what you're talking about. That's funny. Don used to talk about that. Um, well, actually, right. Not just car protectors, but what, what do they call them? Floor protectors? Uh, where, you know, the uh, mechanic puts it on the floor... What do you call those things? The mechanic puts it on the floor, and then uh, you don't get the seat and the floor all messed up and dirty. Microfiber towels. DOT. Wow, this is great. DOT of the best t-shirts. Huh. Rock and roll. Hey, what's up? Uh, key holder that floats. Oh, that's a good idea. A bottle top opener that looks like a car hauler. Oh, wow. See? I don't know, but that sounds expensive, man. I definitely can't start with that now. But I love these ideas. So keep sharing those ideas because i got to keep making merch. Um, in fact, what's going on is uh, there's um, I can't do the merchandise store through YouTube yet because I don't have enough subscribers. You know, they put these caps on stuff, so um, it's pretty interesting. What else? Tivix suits? What's a Tivix? Tivix. I don't know what that is, man. T Y V E X. A Tivix suit? Oh. Oh. Wow. That's a pretty interesting idea. Wow. That is a really cool idea, man. 
Disposable coveralls, right? Height sticks with your logo. Lanyards. These are great ideas, you guys. This is awesome, man. Um, yeah. I, I love it. I love it, guys. So I want to do this stuff. I want to keep making stuff. But uh, do me a favor. If nothing else, send me... Uh, I want to send you some business cards, all right? I, I'm looking for folks to help spread the message. If, you, if you'll email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com, send me an email, give me a mailing address, and I'll mail you some uh, business cards. You can help me spread the message. That'd be awesome. That would really help a lot. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and get into why is dispatching so hard. And I'll tell you what. I love this shirt, but it's, it's totally messing up my lighting. So I am uh, I'm going to take off my disposable coveralls. And there we go. See, look, the lighting's already better. Okay. Now I know why I have a black t-shirt for the show. Jackets. That's an awesome idea. I would love some jackets. That'd be cool. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Okay. Brightness is all the way. Make your drivers go in with Tivic suits. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hi, I'm here to pick up your car. <laughs> like, just the, just a face in a suit. Dude, all right, that'd be odd. People are like, yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll definitely meet you at the end of the driveway. Okay, speaking of, what makes dispatching so hard? You have to watch several screens all day, every day, and you have to dial fast. Because even if you stare at the screen all day, glued to it, and by the way, I got up for coffee. Man, I was so mad. I was watching, 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 watching. I get up for coffee. I come back. The load I want is sitting on the screen. I'm dialing like crazy. Oh, no. We're, no, Yeah, no, we're dispatching that right now. In fact, I think, I think, one of, I think one of the favorite things some brokers like to say is, oh, yeah, no, already dispatched. Man, I hate that. The Atta Car Hauler promo video has drivers in this. Oh, the ATA. Awesome. The Atta. Well done, Jay. Okay. Broker packets, insurance certs, and a million other ways to miss loads. Seriously, man. Like, there are so many ways to miss loads. Oh, my gosh. Broker packets make me crazy. Like, dude, how about this? I've even said, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and dispatch that car. Yeah, dude, that voice of the the on the guy, uh, the the office movie. I can never m remember the name of that movie. Yeah, let's go ahead and dispatch that car, and uh, we'll get the broker packet done during the dispatch. That never works, by the way. Um, or insurance certificates. You know, waiting on insurance companies. I waited on one the other day. Literally waited all day. I waited all day. I called. I emailed. Easy peasy. Sugar on top. Nothing nothing man i mean there are so many ways to miss a good load it blows it, it, it <laughs> oh my gosh okay i'm gonna do some kool-aid dude oh god oh man that makes me crazy it's a freaking 1989 honda what do i need a packet for Good call, Paul. That is the truth, man. Exactly. Meanwhile, Jimmy and Joey dumped a 58 bet. I wonder how many ratings they had. The same driver talk every day about what about the backhaul? Oh my gosh. Really? We're going to do this again? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've been looking at loads. This is like a real phone call. Hey, yeah, been, I've been looking at loads. Let's do this. Go ahead and, let's go ahead and pretend I'm calling the driver. So I'm calling, I'm talking to the driver, right? I'm on my headset. I've just, I just got off the phone. Yeah. So, okay. So I've been looking at some cars and, um, all right. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing, I've been looking at central. Oh, wait, you can't see my screen here. Yeah. I've been looking at central. This is like, you know, right. This is a dramatization. Yeah, man. I've been looking at central and I'm seeing a route and what we're going to do is, um, we're gonna we're gonna book you from 
I'm seeing something good from Oklahoma City to Nashville. Now I see three that we can do like Oklahoma City. We got two in Oklahoma City, one in Norman, so that's a really close on the pickup. And two go to Nashville, one goes to Memphis, but I got to book them right now because they're really paying good. And you know what he says? Well, what about the backhaul? Really? What about the backhaul? Well, I'll tell you what. Here's the answer. I'll tell you what. I can. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Do, I'm gonna hit duplicate window. I'm gonna run the backhaul. Okay. And while I do that, we're gonna lose the best freaking car that I need to be booking right now. But you and I are on the phone talking about the backhaul, and in about five seconds, it won't matter. So how about that? Should we do that? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got to go? Okay. I got to go too. All right, bye. I'm going to go jump off a cliff. Okay. Okay. Constant stress and anxiety about loads, brokers, drivers, and money. Seriously, man. Like, you know, is the load, am I, can, am I going to get the load? Am I going to keep the load? Is the load just going to cancel? Are they going to dispatch? What about the broker? Will the broker answer the phone? What if the broker doesn't like me? What if we don't have enough ratings? What if they have a packet? What if they, you know, what if they, what if, and I, I don't, whatever. Drivers, what if I can't get off the phone with this guy to book this load? I have literally, uh-huh, yeah, no, uh-huh, yeah, no, we can definitely look at the back hall. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm on my other phone. Yeah, no, uh-huh, yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, hey, yeah, I'm calling about a load on Central. Yeah, we can talk about the backhaul. Uh, yeah, it's a 58 vet that we're not going to dump off the top. Yeah, no, the backhaul is great. Uh, sure, yeah, no, we can do that. Yeah, we definitely do that. Okay, uh-huh, easy peasy. Okay, see? that That's how that goes. And money, oh my gosh. Am I going to get paid? Is the driver going to get paid? Is it 30 days? Is it 15 days? Is it COD? Oh my gosh, how many drivers do I need to work for full time just to just to be able to pay for cat litter? See, I messed up my phone over here in my dramatization. I'm telling you. Let's go to, let's go to the mug. Let's do it. Let's go to the mug. The mug o pro I told you this would be a really weird show. See, I got man, look how many problems are in here. Here's another. It's a double. This one's a double-sided problem. Drivers want you to have the backhaul figured out before you've even booked the first load. Are you kidding me? I just said that. Drivers want you to have the backhaul figured out before you've even booked the first load. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. I know. It sucks. Okay, let's go to the next one. The amount of incorrect information within one dispatch is mind-boggling. No kidding, man. I mean, even major brokers, even mix-mix major brokers are sending me dispatches with crap on them. I mean, total nonsense. You got, not to mention the wrong contact. Yeah, you call the dealership. Yeah, he doesn't work here anymore. Bye. Okay, that's fine. Whatever, I can handle that. But wrong street address? Really? Wrong year, wrong make, wrong model, wrong VIN? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it actually happens. More than once. Oh, how about this one? The driver goes to the rail yard to pick up that truck, that brand new truck that's not even paying enough, but we need to book it, and I talked him into it? And he goes there, and we we don't have a bay number. I am on my knees praying that he can get this car. And guess what? It's not there. And he drives around the rail yard. He even drives around the rail yard. Thank God he lives near there. Yeah, major broker. Major broker. This happens all the time. Why? What What else? What? What do you do? Oh my goodness. Commit first, figure it out later. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's a fun dispatching job. Committing first, figured out later. I think you just created a, a mug problem. Hey, you get a mug problem for that blackout. Here we go. What do we got? Uh, I'll just read it. You see it. You see those words on there. The many, many phone calls, leaving messages, getting ignored. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's see here. You got a few in there. Oh, yeah, you got some in there, Paul. I mean, so many, several people got some in there. Sloppy industry. The more you do, the more they want. All right. Thanks for coming out of the woodwork, Munble. I'm kidding. No, I really appreciate the comment. It's true. It's true. Makeup, makeup, pay for it. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was so easy negotiating the first time. If it's wrong, the broker has to pay up for the inconvenience. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a state law. Hey there, what's up Irvine Transport? Thanks for joining the show. Can you see the blood vessels popping out of my neck? Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> we got a Facebook reply. Okay, what's next? Negotiating with brokers feels like pointless begging and wasted time. Right, right. No, you just, if, if the broker, yeah, the broker has to pay. I'm telling you, negotiating, you know, like I do these shows, I talk about price per mile and the maintenance and the expenses and the insurance, truck payments, trailer payments. I mean, the, the freaking load board golden umbrella payments I mean all these payment ELDs stack it up and I tell this to brokers and they're like oh okay so do you want that car <laughs> oh my god really oh man or how about this major broker that loves to use actual pickup and actual delivery you know who they are major broker I mean I'm telling them all this stuff begging and praying for more money and i get 25 bucks on a vip order oh my god i said what's what's vip even mean well they're, they're very important people well it, you know but are they paying oh yeah i mean but you don't get any that's what are you talking that's be crazy talk that's crazy you're just the carrier you're not even the carrier you're the dispatcher right oh my gosh you are the dispatcher no listen you know what speaking of guess what guess what you know what error you made there you go here's what you, there you go that's you on the map yeah see see here's this guy yeah yeah that's right see here's here's your customer the vip right and then and then here's us right okay here's us there you go. And <laughs> there this is you. Like you're you know, you're in the way here. You're you're there. No, you're down here. Yeah. Here's us, here's them. And and yeah, we got that wrong too. You know, let's let you, there's the guys that and then there's you. There you go. There's the ecosystem. Oh, man. Hey, what's up? You made it to the stream. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you made it. I'm having a blast. It's obvious. Um, I'm a broker, and it seems there's always an upsell. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm really happy that, as a broker, you haven't just, you know, hit your jetpack and gotten out of here. Um, do me a favor. Will you send me an email? Uh, autotransportintel at gmail.com and i'd love to have you on the show honestly i want to do a show soon what makes brokering so hard because i actually i know some of the things i i actually personally know i've brokered just a few vehicles it's been a long time but um it helps being in touch with brokers and in fact you know what's interesting what i what i was reminded of one of the main broker pains is number one it, 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 am I going to be able to get this vehicle moved, right? And then after you get a carrier signed up, then the number one question is, did I charge enough? Did I charge the customer enough compared to what I'm paying the carrier? So 
Number one, can I get this? Can I get this car moved and keep the client? And number two, did I charge the customer and client enough? It's pretty interesting. Totally, totally different side of the coin. So I appreciate, I appreciate your comment, and um, I really do. Everyone in enclosed hauling is a VIP. So what? Join the club? Yeah, no kidding. That's where we're headed. Um, okay, most loads on load boards are too cheap. For drivers, more time wasted. It's true. I mean, you, you know, you look at the load. Let's do a search. Who's got a search for me? Let's do a search, right? Let's make this totally random. While you guys give me a search, I'm going to go back into my mug of problems. Okay. Here we go. I'm telling you, this, thing is, this mug is packed with problems. Uh, no, I'm not calling some broker that told you we had cars to move. I already know that when they are making calls to move cars, their rates suck. Don't waste my time. Wow, that really plays into number four. No doubt. Yeah, if the broker's calling, okay, it would if it was good, it would have gotten booked. Or there's something wrong. Either the location sucks, the money and the customer sucks, or, you know, or you just wish you hadn't picked up the phone. It's one of those. I like talking to brokers. Actually, I got a call from someone at Cars Arrive. I think it was Chuck. So if you're watching Chuck, um, you know, I hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, New York to South Carolina. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the search request. Let's do it. And then I'll respond to those comments. New York to South Carolina. I promise we're going to get to a few calls probably in about 10 minutes. All right. Oh, whoops. I'm over here doing it. You're not seeing it. Here, let's do this. You got to see the search, right? All right. Here we are. Okay. So we're on Central Dispatch, right? And we go to search vehicles. Did you guys see my top five car hauling load boards video? No? Okay, good. All right. So New York to South Carolina. Okay. All right, New York to South Carolina. Now, how many cars we're we looking for? That's all right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. You know, you got to go to the advanced search options. If you if you just do that and hit search, you're missing you're missing some important filters. All right. You want to do open, unless you're enclosed, which not many guys are, right? Uh, let's go ahead and do all because I want to see. I want to do all running one through all. I don't want to do 60 days. I'm not booking anything 45 days out because I'll tell you what, it cancels almost every freaking time. Okay, take it easy, Jay. Jeez. There's no point in booking a car out for 45 days. All right? You want to do this one hour or newer. You want to see the fresh stuff. The fresh stuff pays the best. Now, it's 920 at night, so we can make, let's do four hours or newer, all right? By the way, there shouldn't be any really, there really shouldn't be many new vehicles right now. And minimum pay, what, New York to South Carolina? Let's just keep our sanity and do 50 cents a mile. And, if, and then if, if we've got to start digging at the bottom of the barrel, which is probably what we're going to have to do, then we'll, you know, open it up. All right. Albany to Charleston. Now, specifically, where, oh, so, dang it, I got a, I got a backward. Oh, and a backward. What about the back haul? How could you how could you book a front haul without booking a back haul? I can't believe it. It's not hard fields, it's about impossible. Yeah, and a back haul. Oh, three. And South Carolina to New York. Well, it was North New York, South Carolina, yeah, okay. And a three car. Alright. Alright, now whereabouts specifically? Because obviously we don't just want to go anywhere. Yeah, one min three max, that's right. Best way to get in by the way, I'm over, you know, I'm looking over here in my chat screen. Uh, best way to get into and close is a new car have a one car trailer with two and oh cool. Like idiots that try listing eBay sales but oh brother, yeah, eBay. That's how you get the reputation to carry real two hundred fifty. Hey Jay, running late tonight. Okay, that's cool, Eric. Welcome to the show, man. Brooklyn to Columbia. There we go. Oh, no. You're booking out of Brooklyn? Oh, man. Why do I say that? Do you guys know why? It's interesting. Of all the places in the United States where you could talk about 
picking up or delivering. What's really interesting is Long Island may as well be like in, you know, a di on a different continent. Like, Long Island is really, the cutoff is here. Well, the cutoff is the Hudson River, honestly. Because I know, like, 99% of car haulers, they don't go east of Jersey City. Um, now, if you do, if you do go east of Jersey City, you are in a, you are literally in a realm, uh, it's almost like Lord of the Rings. You're like, you're like, you know, a holy, an unholy elf or something. The point is that, that is, that is, I don't, I don't even look at it anymore. It's totally different. So if you're, are you really looking at that? Because you're actually dealing with one of the areas. But I also say this. Yeah, Brooklyn is tough to deal with plus tolls. Yeah. Oh, man. And that's the thing. That's why I don't look at it. Because it's it's literally, it's like, a, it's like a wormhole in space as far as getting in and out, as far as time goes. And yeah, and the tolls and the traffic. But I want to say this, too. When you're dispatching, and you, and you think, like kind of like I just said, well, I don't know that area. You know what? It's just an area. Right? It's just an area. Don't be afraid of it. So let's look at it. All right? But, um, but yeah, if we want to look at Brooklyn, we should narrow this down. So let's do, let's do this. Let's do, let's pick a city in the middle of Long Island. How about like Comac? I'm not even sure how you say it. Kamak? Kamak? I don't know. I'm going to do Kamak. I think I like Kamak. I'm going to do Kamak, New York. He says it like a guy from Kansas City, honey. Did you hear the way he said it? He said Kamak. <laughs> point five. We don't even need point five, but let's do it anyways. What do we got? Oh, okay, we got some Connecticut stuff. But I'll tell you what, if we're, if we're in... That's interesting. May, there may not be much coming out of New York. Um, Brewster. See, even 91 cents a mile. I'll bet you that's cheap. Oh, can you guys see that? I'll bet you 91 cents a mile isn't even that good of a deal coming out of Long Island. And I'll tell you what. I'm just going to say it right now. I'm, based on the broker listing, I'm pretty sure it's not a good deal. So, let's see. I go into that city between 4 to 6. Reason why I say those are because I'm going to be based out of New York. I tell you, man, if you start hauling out of Brooklyn and you and you're good at it, yeah, New York is a super beast if you don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, actually that, that sounds good. That's better than uh um you like them. Interesting. Do you like being asked if you'll move it for 100 bucks less? Hmm. That's interesting. Unless I'm thinking of somebody else. Have you ever been asked that? Am, am I, is that the right broker? Maybe somebody else. Maybe I got my information mixed up. All right, let's go back to the... I don't think so, but let's go back to the... Let's get out of that ecosystem. All right, let's go to number three. Drivers expect your attention, but one driver is not enough to live on. Yes. That is exactly... Um, that is exactly one of the main problems, is that uh, suddenly one driver, you, you spend, you know, several hours on the phone with one driver during the day. How do you, how do you manage your other four drivers, assuming you have five? If you're, if you're a busy dispatcher, especially because if you're only charging, I mean, listen, I can read, I can read the, uh, I'm going to read this. This is an actual... This is an actual dispatcher solicitation that I heard about earlier today. You guys ready? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I got to scroll through all the other texts. Actual. Oh, man. Actual dispatcher solicitation. Shoot, I'm not going to find it. You know what? I think I saved it to my images because I thought this was really interesting. 
All right. Good afternoon. This is real. Good afternoon. I apologize for disturbing. I'm writing to offer you my dispatch services. I used to work in a big broker dispatch company for three years, and now I'm working as an independent dispatcher. I will be planning the route. Make sure you get the best prices on the market. Raising brokers, communicating with customers, doing all the paperwork, making sure you will get paid, etc. Also, I have my own dealers and regular customers. I'm asking for only 5% commission. And I would really like to work for you. Are you interested in getting a dispatcher? 5%. You realize how many drivers you need to make a living on 5%? Per load you know if you're booking let's say let's go to the calculator let's say you're booking let's say you're booking um, and you're if your driver let's say let's say you're oh let me go to the switch the screen here let's say your driver is amazing and and, and gross is 20,000 a month and you're only charging five percent so you're going to gross a thousand a month with that driver. Do you know how hard it is? How, how hard you're going to have to work to make that thousand? There's no way you can do that every month of the year. There's no way. Nope, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Um, and if you think you can handle five drivers at that level at that rate and make five thousand a month no I have never seen that happen times 12 yeah easy peasy 60 grand a year easy peasy it's never gonna happen do you know why that's never gonna happen because this stuff, these top 10, it's just this top 10. I got a whole mug of problems. I got a whole mug of problems. You're, you, you can't do it. You, you can't. You won't make it. Let's do this. Uh, let's see here. Not with my true. If you want more attention, pay more. <laughs> Facts, yeah. That's code for I'm a broker, but I'm going to tell you I'm a dispatcher and take 5% off the loads you carry for me. Woo! Good one, man. That's awesome. And you know what's funny? Have you ever, Paul, have you ever been called a broker? I've had people call me a broker, like, and they do it to, like, insult me and belittle me. And I'm, I mean, seriously, that's why they called me a broker. And I said, man, I'm not a broker. And, and also, if you're calling me a broker, you don't understand the ecosystem. Because... It's totally different. A broker educates a customer and helps the customer. A broker is not really a carrier's assistant. The broker helps the customer. The dispatcher helps the carrier. The dispatcher works with the broker and the customer and the carrier. That's why he's so small. Got it? Okay. Now I pulled another problem out. Now I got to read it. Just because you want to haul to BFE doesn't mean there are loads to book to get in and out of there. <laughs> it's funny when I get told where, like a driver says, "Well, I want to go to, you know, Spain." <laughs> All right, awesome, man. Easy peasy. Okay. What else we got here? And you become I know, man. This is this show is awful actually i mean this is like what am i doing i'm crucifying myself that's because i've had it i've had it man i really have um that's good for a middle schooler i need a dispatcher i'm a broker with a lot of loads on central that take fewer to move all my loads pay a minimum of 45 cents a load <laughs> oh yeah too much vodka and the kool-aid broker equals pimp oh my gosh wait are you serious yeah Listen, seriously, MNBL, you know, I know that's just your YouTube handle. I would really like to hear from you. Please do email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I would really, you know, I'd like to talk to you. Um, no, they think I'm the owner if they talk to the owner and myself. True story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
I list on Central, one, two, three. It just sucks to wait for the phone to ring. Interesting. We should talk. I, we really should talk. And I know that's another broker pain, waiting for the phone to ring, right? There are those loads that just blow off the load board, and then there's those ones that just sit and creak and make your life. And you know what? And you and I both know this gets back into, did I charge the customer enough to move this load? Or maybe it's just hard to move. And that gets into customer expectations, which is another uh, broker pain. Nobody's looking for 45 cents per mile car. Yeah. Three times 45, buck 45 a mile. I can haul empty dry vans for $2 a mile. Okay. Yeah, exactly. What is this? Hey, what's up, Stan? Welcome to this. This is Jay's Lost His Mind, uh, episode 45. I don't see any cars on one, two, three. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. Well, one, two, three is more of a freight load board, but um, I thought maybe they had some cars. I don't know. Load boards. Yeah, it's not a car load board. Yeah. All right. This is we're talking car hauling today, but I mean, these principles apply to freight dispatchers as well. I know they do. Uh, it's twenty four seven, and you lay awake wondering if you screwed up. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's real, man. Oh my God, I don't know how many times I have laid in bed wondering, oh my God, should I have booked that car? Maybe I shouldn't have booked that car. Maybe, maybe I should have, maybe, maybe I should have gone back to college. Maybe I should have, um, maybe we shouldn't have gone from North Carolina to Kansas City. Should, maybe we should have gone to Wichita. Maybe I should have booked that one from Nashville to St. Louis. Maybe Ohio, Texas isn't as good as it was a couple weeks ago. Maybe, you know, right? I mean, man, I'm telling you, it just goes on and on. Under 100 miles, oh, yeah, no doubt. Maybe I shouldn't have booked that $50 car. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have booked that repo car. Maybe. Oh, dude, totally. If you want it, let's see, what do we got here? minimum cost cents per mile i should be paying to get some visibility on oh here we go honestly what is the minimum cost cents per mile i should be paying to get some visibility seriously you shouldn't list it for 50 cents a mile or less if you want people to see it i mean i just did a central dispatch shirt shirt <laughs> search and i did a 50 cents a mile filter like nobody wants to see below 50 cents a mile so if you want nobody to see it put it listed for under 50 cents a mile there are people on facebook car, car hauling groups that i mean i read one a day it said i refuse to book for less than 50 cents a mile and if you do you should quit that's and that's really how people feel yeah and and paul says 65 cents a mile. i agree with that that's real visibility. 60 cents a mile is, is actual visibility. If you want it to move on central, it has to be posted right. Route, money, it has to come across the dispatcher's radar. Absolutely. I, if I see it for 60 cents a mile or more, and I'm talking Midwest, listen, man, that's another thing. I keep talking like this, but it's all about regions. If you're northeast of, like, Kentucky... And it's 60 cents a mile, may as well be 30 cents a mile in Texas. I'm not going to look at it. I'm looking for 80 cents a mile, 90 cents a mile up here in the Northeast. That's why 90 cents a mile up in Long Island? No, man. It means to be at least a dollar a mile. Tell me I'm wrong. Unless you have time to wait and you want to pay less. But it isn't better to just keep the caesar's moving and get the oh cars move, move on to the next cars that are going over a thousand miles i start out at 50 cents per mile 700 miles i go to 70 under five okay well that that's not bad actually that's not bad it sounds reasonable and that's where you start right and you know that you, you know you may need to go up but that it's the guys that are doing 30 cents a mile for a thousand miles no that's dude stop Stop listing anything for 30 cents a mile except for your resume. Okay. All right. In close, I start with a dollar. What if the load is cross-country 2,500 miles? Nothing should be 30 cents a mile, Stan. Nothing. I don't care if it's a tricycle and we're just going to throw it in the bed on the top of a nine car. Nothing should pay 30 cents a mile. You know, 
what you guys do know what brand perception, right? If people think they can move something at 30 cents a mile, and you know how this works, because every sales manager in every company every week wants to make more, 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 more. You go to 30 cents a mile, now we gotta do 28 cents a mile. Now we need 25 cents a mile. Do I hear 23 cents a mile? Can we get it for 20 cents a mile? Can I get a peasy peasy? Is the pizza fresh? Can I get a two for one? I mean, come on. Okay, Jay. All right. And the number one reason what makes dispatching so hard is that you find yourself praying you can get through another week. Seriously. Dude. Dude that posted for, you're going to do 5%? Oh, you will be praying, buddy. Number one's coming in your life quick. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see, I can haul it then for the same. 30 cents a mile will bury anyone. Give it. it will, man. 30 cents a mile is insane. But what's the, what's the price? What, what's in the, in the, you know, what I'm trying to get at? In the coffee cup, your Starbucks coffee cup. Which, by the way, you know, hey, I got a straw. You're under arrest. Okay, so um, you got your Starbucks. This, it's Starbucks full of coffee. This is five bucks, right? Something like that. And what was their price per mile? What what so so they they got a cup for five bucks and the cost was like what a quarter? Fifty cents? So their margin, like this is the profit, right? Their margin on a cup of coffee is like um I don't know, like five thousand percent. What's the margin on auto transport? It isn't anywhere near 5,000%. It should be, though. It's a car. It's your life. You've spent years dreaming of this vehicle. This vehicle gets you to and from your job, your relationships, your livelihood. Without your car, you got very little. You have a, you're basically an internet connection and a computer. That's about it. You can't even get to Starbucks without your car and yet you want to pay nothing to move your car how did this happen oh my gosh all right okay i think it's time for a phone call i think jay needs uh i think jay needs a break it's 9 40. so let's see if we can um let's see if I, i'm just going to leave this up there for your perusal all right let's try mevo Get the get the mug get my mug of problems out of the way. Um, the number you have entered. Oh yeah. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Okay. Hang on one second, guys. Okay. There we go. The number you have done. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah so it's pretty interesting right i mean i why did i do this i'm doing this to help all right so you understand this is what the dispatchers going through all dispatchers all the time hey Jay. hey what's up what's going on hey welcome to first of all let me say welcome to auto transport intel you're, so you you are live right now. I hope you're okay with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So you're live and um, Mevo. Okay. Mevo. Yeah. All right. Mevo. By the way, let me just ask. I don't know. Have you seen any of the show? Or are you driving? Or or what are you doing? No, no. I I I've seen the show. I'm not right now. I'm driving. So okay. You're yeah. driving. Okay. All right. No, that's cool. That's I just. What I'm asking you is, all right, so you're driving, and uh, I'm only going to keep you on the phone for a few minutes, but I called you because you do your own dispatching, right? I did at one time, yes. You did, right. Yeah. You did at one time, but but what happened? Well, I, it, it was a nightmare. I did it, I did it for a few months, and uh, I mean, it, I, I got to give it to the guys who do it by themselves. I mean, I don't know how they do it. To me, I'm, I'm old school. 
I believe, you know, time is money. So when you're just, you know, looking for loans and looking for loans, you can get somebody to do that for you. I believe you're going to make more money. I know you're going to make more money because I've seen it already. I've got a dispatcher now and I've seen, uh, what, now this week and last week, about four weeks already, I've seen a, I will say I don't get 30% increase. 30% increase, right. You you have a dispatcher now, and you're yes. so glad you do, right? Yes, because, he again, my job is pretty much just picking up the cars, loading them, unloading them, and driving. I can concentrate more on that. And, again, like I said, I've seen a 30% increase in revenue. Because, again, I don't have to, once I, once I get to a location, I don't have to unload, look for another load, and everything. Everything is... Pretty much, I got a guy who pretty much takes care of all that for me. He does a great job. I mean, yeah. And so, one of the things that I'm curious of, like, what are the some of the pain points that you had when you were booking your own cars? Can you tell me some of the problems you had? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. Let's say you know I'll get one right and. You got to negotiate with the, with the broker. You got to negotiate with the customer, whoever, it, you know. And they'll be like, okay, we'll get back to you. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And if they do, you're not just going to wait there. You're going to be driving. So then when you're driving, you're like, all right, I'll take it. and Or you won't take it. That's time. All that is time. So then you're just waiting around. And again, I'm from the old school. I believe time is money. So if you can get somebody to take that responsibility, that burden, because I do call it a burden for myself. Speaking. And you can get somebody to do it for you, it's night and day. I'm telling you, it's night and day. Were, did you feel like you were even, as a driver, were you even able to see fresh loads right after they got posted? You see, yeah, I mean, I could see the loads. I could see some loads or not. But think about this, okay? I mean, me personally, I start at 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, right? And... You know, and I'll stop around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, whenever, you know, whenever my, my hours are up. But during that time I'm driving, how many loads are being are being, are being dropped to central dispatch? The cars arrive and everything else. Things that you can't see. You can't see those loads. So somebody else is getting them, and it's, you know, dispatch. And, as you know, so you miss out on a lot of that stuff. Yeah, you miss a lot. That's my personal. Well, and that's the thing is, as a driver, I mean, you're at a major disadvantage. Oh, here's a good complaint. So much talking and so little doing. Doesn't it feel that way when you're dispatching? Yes, yes. And again, it's like, okay, like for you, Jay, I mean, if you talk to a broker, you talk to a customer, it's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation where I don't have to get involved, and you can negotiate a price that's fair. If I don't know how to do that, that's how these, you know, these poor models have gone so low. In my opinion, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why, because too many people, too many hands in the candy jar. But some people don't know what they're doing. That's my personal opinion. Well, and, and that thing is, even, I'll tell you what, and what's frustrating for me is, even though I think I know what I'm doing, I still got a million problems. But, at least it's now my problem and i mean as a driver i think it's more safe really that yeah, you, you yeah. can f oh my oh my god i mean in georgia in, in georgia you can't even touch your cell phone how in the world would you dispatch yep yeah, exactly you can't you can't do none of that so you think about it and then uh, yeah that's a, that's a big thing now so you think about it when you drop when, when, when you get when you get a load and you drop a load now you got to start thinking about getting something to go back home or go back to some or you know, continue going on to another state or whatever you're going to do. But you're missing out on a lot of stuff. And then you got to get the paperwork. Then you got to do all that paperwork. And then the phone keeps on ringing. You know, it's like, it's so much. Now, don't get me wrong, there's people who do it. But if, that, if that's how you program it, you don't try something else, you can't say that a dispatch is not needed. That's, just, that's me personally. Because I was one of those guys that were like, okay, yeah, well, this type of there, I could do the job. That was me in the beginning. But then I started to think about it. And I said to myself, hey, you know, why? I'm, I'm losing out on money. And time is money. I mean, that's, that's the way I look at this. 
Well, it's true. I mean, it's totally true. And uh, so let's do this. I mean, I know you're working. I didn't want to make this a, a long call, but I, I, I appreciate you taking the time to join me. Was there anything else you want to say about dispatching or your dispatcher, anything like that? Well, you know, I thank, I thank, you know, I thank my dispatch. My dispatch has been good. I know there's a lot of dispatches that have been uh, good. Uh, I want to thank you also. I mean, you know, I consider you like an ambassador for us car haulers. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you very much for everything you do, Jay. Thank you. I mean, I'm, uh, I mean, you, you're, uh, you know, you, you look out for us a lot. Your shows. I mean, I don't catch them every week on live, what? but I do. I, but I do see them. I do see them during the week. So little by little, but I do. I saw you. I saw a lot the other week. I, I see a few weeks. I try to see him every week. <laughs> I don't. I, I'll catch up. I always do that. Well, you know, again, I, I, I appreciate that. You. That that's wonderful. And so, I'll, what? Here's what I'm going to ask you in return. Um, if I and I ask this of everybody watching, if I if I've helped you or your car hauling business or anything with my videos, um, I ask for your likes. And I ask for your, uh, and then on Facebook, if you can go to Facebook, leave me a, a positive review. If you're on Facebook, those two things do so much for my channel. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, I will definitely do that and everything else. And cool, again, man. want to thank you, you know, honestly, I mean, you know, you, you, really, you, you, can't, you do a lot for us, you know. And, and I appreciate that. I think, I'll tell you, you know what's really interesting? I think that I'm accomplishing more by doing this show than I did by just booking cars. Um, you know, I talked to so many people as a dispatcher, but I don't think I actually accomplish any, I don't really accomplish anything. I'm just booking cars and going crazy and experiencing all this madness. But I think with this channel, I think I'm, I'm helping educate people. I think I'm helping spreading the information that is really important to the ecosystem and ultimately what i really want to do is try and help uh help uh create a, a system or understanding where the customer understands the carrier a lot more than they do right now right i mean but let me just say this in closing uh, uh, so people can think about this let's say you get a car okay get a car for $300, just to say, okay, low bullet, $300, okay? Now, if you get a dispatcher, and let's say he just charges you 10%, let's just say out there 10%, that's $30. He's going to try to get you more than $30, $300. He's going to try to get you $350, and if they don't say no, they're going to go $325. Well, guess what? You're only really paying him for his service $5, okay? And that's less stress for you. And again, my personal opinion is become the dispatcher and the broker talk. And that's the way it should be. Because more car haulers start talking to these brokers and everything else, and they don't know what they're saying, prices keep going to continue to going down. Do you know what I mean? Well, too many people, too many, yeah. it's interesting you say that. I Actually, I think, I think it'd be, it's better for a dispatcher to charge a higher percent so they can focus on that driver and fight for i mean that because that's really what's going to motivate that dispatcher yeah i i, I do agree yep, with that I, yep yep exactly yeah that's and i do believe that you know mm -hmm. and, and you know hey like i said i mean it's night and day it's night and day that's awesome that's awesome um well listen man thanks so much for your time have a have another oh, uh have, yeah. a, have a safe trip and um yeah, man, stay safe out there. That is ultimately all what I can ask of you. Okay, thank you very much again, Jay. If anything, you got my number, just give me a call. And if okay. anybody you know, wants to drop me a, 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 an email or something, you can reach me at uh, frontlinecarstransportation at gmail.com. And I'll get back to you. And, I'll, and, you know, I always respond to all my emails and everything so that if I can help somebody, I don't mind. You know, Front we're here to help each other. Yeah, we are. Frontline cars transportation at gmail.com. Cool, man. All right. Cool, okay. man. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Good night, everyone. All right. All right. Take, Take care. Bye -bye. All right. See you. Bye.
Awesome. Now, hopefully you guys could hear him okay. Like I said, I'm working on... Um, I need to improve the audio. I know that. Um, and, um, you know, so I'm, I, I really appreciate the feedback um, that I get on the show, topics, you know, whatever it is. So let me know. Um, now let's do this. I'm reading my, on the big, yeah. Enclosed is, man, enclosed is a, is a whole nother animal. All right, let's do this. Let's go. Now let's talk to a dispatcher. All right. We're going to talk to, first we're going to talk to, let's see, what do I got here? I got. Number you have entered has not been. Okay, okay, geez. <laughs> Is he talking to himself again, honey? Yeah. All right, let's go to... All right, let's do... Let's talk to... Um, I've got... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. What are you talking about? <laughs> Love doing that. It's a smokey on your tail. Hello? Hey, welcome to Auto Transport Intel. Hey, Jay. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, you want me to call you back? Yeah. You can call me back. Hey, that's cool, man. I will call you back, okay? All right. All right, man. See ya. No problem, no problem. Okay, let's do... Let's try another dispatcher. Carrie assumes all the risk, don't sell short. I hear you, man. Silverman, I think you're a broker, is that right? Uh, it's interesting. No, I'm thinking of something else. Hey, welcome to Auto Transport Intel. Hey, Jerry, how's it going, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Good, you? Oh, well, you know, just complaining. Yeah. You know, people love it when I complain. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I got a whole mug of complaints here. Right. Yeah, man, lots. I think you've got some complaints in here, man. Let's see if I can find one. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if we can get... Let's see if I can... But I'm not calling anybody out, and you don't have to admit to anything. This is not the right. Mueller probe. Okay, I worked it in. Is my number being blacklisted by brokers because they think I'm you and you don't know what you're doing? It's not worth my reputation. That is not you. But uh, but it's another broker. It's another dispatcher complaint. So um, so all right. So you are, have you have you been have you seen any of the show? I don't know what you're doing, but you don't have yeah, to see. I, oh, you have you saw some of the show? Yeah, I just came on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, all right, I put up my top, I put up my personal top ten reasons dispatching is so hard. So it's on the yeah. screen now. I know there's a bit of a delay. You're gonna see it in a second. Um, so, uh, I don't know. What What do you have to say, Mike? You dispatch. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What I'm reading on your screen. Yeah. I mean, that's uh. Listen, and you know what? Let me say this. This is a tough position for... This is really a tough position for all of us. Right. Is that we... Listen, we have jobs to do. All right? Yeah. But I think it's okay to to talk about what is wrong in the job. And I, and it's, I don't think it's just me saying it. I think that more and more through social media, we are seeing and hearing more about the pain points, the specific pain points of people at their jobs. So it's right. this is not a gripe fest out of nowhere. This is, listen, people don't seem to realize all the problems that this job is having. And next week, let's talk about your job. And then the next week, let's talk about how rich this CEO is. Whatever. Mm -hmm. 
But I think it's fair. It's fair game. And I and it's, I think it's my duty to talk about what makes dispatching so hard. It is insanely hard. Yeah, it can be. Right, Absolutely. it can be. That's right. It's not all the time. I've booked cars. Man, I've booked good-paying cars, and it was like, wow, that was awesome. I, I saw it. I booked it. The driver picked it up, and I got paid. Amazing. But right. that's the exception, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Because you can spend all day building a route. Yep. Uh, you know, I like to say, just because you see it doesn't mean you can have it. Right. And, which I think is it's something I say now, you know, to everybody. But, um, because that is true in life, just because you see it. In fact, I think we're seeing that as a big part of a movement today. Just because you see it doesn't mean you can have it. Right. So, uh, and I think some of those basic elements get missed uh, in car hauling. Like, you know, well, I saw a load and I want you to book it. Okay. But I just want to say, just because you saw it doesn't mean we can have it. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, but that, 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 that gets forgotten. I don't know how much... I don't know how often it gets forgotten. In fact, I kind of go back and forth. I want drivers to look at loads, and then I don't. Right. <laughs> right. Because they saw, you know, telescopic gold bar city, and no, we can't. We can't get that. Right. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I say you got to refresh your screen, and uh, <laughs> it might be gone. You know. Yeah. You should refresh yeah. your screen. Yeah. Yeah. That that'd be another that 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 should be on a that could be on a t-shirt. Auto transport in cell. Refresh your screen. I don't know. Um but uh what I did was now I know like I put up my top ten. Yep. Do, do you have any others? Do you have anything to add up here? I know I've, it's got a long list. But how about how how about let's attack it this way. Can you tell me a story? It's only Tuesday night. Can you tell me a story of a ridiculous dispatching story that just happened already this week? Yeah, I'll give you one that happened today. Right. I had a car go from Nashville out to Redding, California. Drivers in uh, Reno, Nevada. I call the customer to say about three, four hours. My driver should be close. Lady says, uh, my husband left on a plane this morning. He didn't leave a check or cash for your driver. It was COD. Can we mail it to you? Or can he mail it to you when he gets back in a week from his business trip or whatever it was? And I was scrambling saying, uh, you know, my guy's got to get paid. And um, so she, oh, can you take a credit card? And it's like, uh, we really don't take credit cards. So anyways, I called the broker and asked him, you know, um, my guy's got to get paid. He's going to be there in three, four hours. And um, we did get it worked out finally before he got there. But uh, it was just back and forth phone calls I was trying to figure out because my guy's not going to drop off the truck before, uh, you know, they got to pay. So, yeah, it was just a big hassle. You know, it just waste time and I don't know, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good story, and that's yeah, that was that's today. So, that was today. That's that was today. And you uh, have you had the one you just made me think. I had I had one where I talked to a customer. The driver already picked up the car, and then the customer. I guess the customer tells the broker. Broker calls me that the customer left her purse in the car. Oh wow! Yeah, that is definitely an oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. I don't know what you do. Yeah. Where where on the dispatching ladder of possible problems does that one fall? Right. Yeah. I, I and like yours, I mean, what do you do? I, I you don't have to tell me what you did, but yeah, that's a bad problem. Yeah, you know, last uh, I don't know, 2 weeks ago, had a car dropped off Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
a week goes by, everything's good. My guy's long all the way back to Houston, Texas. The lady calls, and uh, you guys crushed my exhaust when you took it off your trailer. I said, you've been driving your car around for a week, and you just noticed now your exhaust is crushed? Well, he must have did it when he loaded the car or unloaded it. And I told her, I said, no, nah, that ain't happening. You know, nothing I can do. You should have called me, the, you know, when he unloaded it, when you first drove the car. I just hate dealing with all that stuff. And then, well, can you contact your driver and ask him and uh, call me back? It's just, you know, wasting a lot of time. You know? My guy's like, I didn't crush no exhaust. It's a week later, you know, you know what I mean? Just stuff like that. You know, it's interesting because here... I hate that stuff. That well, drives me crazy. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that stuff yeah. drives me crazy, too. I mean, it's that's nowhere on the dispatcher job description. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand handling phone calls and... And, and but it's like okay all that does is take you away from maybe booking a good load yeah exactly yeah and I mean I mean I, yeah well, all you can do is give the drivers information which right. seems like you know when you talk to the driver maybe you have a driver that's like what well, why'd you do that well what else am I supposed to do I'm here to right. book cars right yeah yeah um you know what's also tell what's interesting. I was looking at the uh, the amount of uh, viewers on this show, and you know this the viewer count on this show is yeah. the lowest it's been in probably a couple months, and that tells us that the title of the show, "What Makes Dispatching So Hard," a lot of people are like, "Nah, I don't need to watch that." <laughs> right. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. And I think probably if I make another show, what makes brokering so hard? What makes car shipping so hard? Eh, I already know that. Right. And then yeah. and then and then they wonder why people drive a million miles an hour and cut people off because nobody cares about each other. It's interesting. Right. Yeah. Mm. It's amazing yeah. to me. Um. Well, or <laughs> you do. What do you say, Jay? Maybe I should supply these guys with a copy of my terms and let them modify it. Would settle some stuff, or let you do it and have them buy a mug. <laughs> oh man, yeah, Paul's got a lot to say. Well, there's a lot to say, and it's interesting. Um, I, I, as I also asked you that question, I'll bet I could ask you to tell me a crazy story last week, and and the question is, which one do you tell me? Right. Yeah. You're exactly right there. Yeah. What's your worst story from last week? Can you can you can you come up with anything? I sometimes I can't think as quick as I as I wish. So um, I don't I don't have as many horror stories now because I don't have as many drivers. Right. Um, last week. Yeah, I can't remember. You know it. Yeah, we're not day. interested in your problems. Woo oh, what'd you say? <laughs> Yeah, last week, I guess. Uh, you can't remember yeah, last like, week. Oh, no, you got one. Okay. What's that? No, please continue. I was jumping all over the place. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, last week, I guess something happened. I had something coming up from Florida going, I think, just into uh, the Baltimore area. Oh. And the driver, was, you know, because of timing, he uh, ran out of hours. Oh. Uh, so, you know, for the night, he was going to be there the next day. Well... The guy insisted we take two hundred dollars off the load. Well, oh my gosh. right now stuff coming out of Florida is not uh, overly great. I don't think, but um, we still went down there, so obviously we got to come back. And uh, he wanted to go towards home, and uh, you know this guy's insisting he's not paying the full amount, and you aren't on time, and it's like you know we, you know, when I book it, I'm never, uh, you know, I don't make any promises to deliver anything on time, you know? No way, you cannot. You know, within a couple of days. And uh, this guy was insisting he wasn't paying, and it's like, you know, it's, you know, I try to be professional and nice, but it gets to the point, like, you just want to say, well, it ain't coming off the trailer then, and I'll drop it at a tow yard or take it with me. Well, you know, but yeah. can't be rude, but you know, 
sometimes it gets it, it gets old quick so well and that's where what makes car hauling so hard i think a driver would say in his top 10 is these customers that do this kind of stuff cuz now he's got to call a storage facility and just drop it off Right, yeah. And now the yeah. broker's going crazy. You know, and I was also going to say, that's one of the things about car shipping customers that I want to help. I want to help. If I can just get one person off this ledge a year, then I've probably done my job. And that is that believing that you're going to get super cheap discount car hauling, right. but then right. if there's a problem, you want 100 bucks off. Stop. Right. Oh, yeah. Stop with that. That's ridiculous. This is not a Happy Meal. Right. Yeah. All right. Oh, I didn't get my fries. Fine. You, McDonald's would say, walk back in the dang location, get your fries, and get out of here. That's what McDonald's right. would say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, that, and, and, and where's that problem? Why? Who told this person that they could expect their car on a certain day? Right. Wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't, well, sure as heck wasn't the dispatcher. Right, yeah. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the carrier. That only leaves one group. Right. Yeah. But did they cause that, or did the customer create that? Yeah, I, I have no idea, but well, I... Well, I have a hunch. I got a hunch. Yeah. And this is where, and I think it's helpful, right now we're so segmented. Yep. There's a I know there's a bro there's a very popular broker on YouTube. Guess who watches her show? Brokers. Right. Now I got a dispatch channel and I'm, you know, I started talking to dispatchers, but that's not really who I've ended up talking to. Who I'm really talking to now is carriers. Right. But I'm expanding yep. that into brokers. Because we all got to start talking so we can ultimately make some sense to who? The customer. Right. The customer yeah. does not understand what we're doing. Yeah. And it's amazing that in this day and age, with as many cars as we have on the planet, that nobody's explaining how this works. Like, you got to right. do it one person at a time. Like two hours on the phone explaining that it's not a pizza, it's not easy peasy, this is not Uber Eats, it's your car moving right. across the country. And you're welcome. You are welcome to book a flight and go do it yourself. Right. Why right. don't people do that? Because well, time is money. And so are flights. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nothing like preaching to the choir. Right. Yeah. Have you ever prayed to the dispatch gods? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, man, I certainly have. I'll tell you. Have you ever laid awake wondering if you screwed up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, you know, you book one car that's really, really good, and you start building off of that one car, and then that car falls apart, and then your whole load's no good, you know, and you're scrambling, and... uh then you're dealing with problems coming in on the phone. Yeah, you know how it is. Well, there's it's not your, always like that. But, uh, no, it's not. But yeah. but that's your that's where you come to the crossroads. Do I cancel the route, or right. do I hold on, convince the driver, and pray for something better? Right. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. That is a I tough know. crossroads. I I just canceled the car coming out of Nashville. I mean, it wasn't great, but I needed one more car, and uh, I canceled it because I did get something better, and I got a negative rating for that. Ooh. So I got a. This was just uh, I don't know a week ago. Yeah. You know, and um, so I don't know. You well, know, I'll figure it out. Well, it's yeah, you will, and it's interesting that that happened because what I've learned is this, and this is part of the ecosystem. You know, I talk about the ecosystem, and I mean it. I mean, I really do. And that's that if, if I've booked a car for a carrier and yeah. they see something and they're like, cancel that and let's do this, I right. say, no, right. let's not do that. All right? Yeah. We've already yeah, started booking, right? You've had to do that? Right. Well, that's exactly how this turned out. Yeah, they were looking at it, too, and found something better. Yeah. And it's like, no. well, 
Because I'm, you know, I'm looking somewhere else in the country at something else, you know? And, um, but at the was pretty much booked. But at the same time, you and I both know, if you right. try to tell your driver what to do, how does that work out? Right, yeah. Not too well. Correct. So... Yeah. It's a very, and this is where the dispatcher-carrier relationship is, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of like a brotherhood. I mean, you are, you know, your pilot and co-pilot. You're in it together. If the plane crashes, you're both going to die. <laughs> right. Communication is key. You've got to talk. That's why so I say, yeah, important. it is. It's yeah. really, really important. Ah, oh, man. It's really interesting. Well, listen, man, thank you for coming on the show tonight. I'm really glad we talked. And um, uh, we appreciate your service and dedication to the dispatching cause. Yeah. All right, Jay. Okay, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, see ya. All right, right, bye. Yeah. Yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. Manage the chaos. Try to be the thermostat, not the thermometer. That's nice, man. All right. That's a nice one. Nice analogy. Brokers have to deal with many of the same elements. Trying to please everyone involved is a challenge. I know. And I know that. And that's why I talk about the ecosystem. I am now outside of my bubble. I'm in the environment. Oh, my God. What do I do now? Now that I see other people's problems, what do we do? We make a phone call. And that's I think that's one of the keys here. We're just, in society, we don't see other people's problems anymore. I got too many problems. I am not going to see your problems. Right? I'm pretty sure that's what's happened. What's up, Max? Hey, what you up to? How you doing? Great show so far. I don't know. I've been over there chatting, chatting, chatting. Nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> well, you know, and that's not the thing. You know what it is? Is that just like anything else, everything everything has to be in the right dosage. Right. Right? You know what? It's just so frustrating. I, every week we have callers that talk about how they're having problems with their loads and getting paid. I mean, even Serge, you know, as long as he's done this, talks about guys trying to get his money a year later, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. Like, come on. Just, like, write some terms and protect yourself. I just, like, like very frustrating to listen to when I know we could settle this with some better terms. Well, you know, it's interesting you talk about that because I think... This is where we have a serious disconnect between brokers and carriers. And that is that this this idea that you and I both know that if you book a load on Central Dispatch, the terms are the broker's terms. Right? Okay, but it, I, yeah, but um, when we go to civil court and it's challenged, you're going to have your terms and they're going to have theirs and the judge is going to pick what's fair between the two. Okay. When's the last time you went to civil co- court over auto transport. I haven't had to. It's well, like I point to my terms, and, and my terms are rational and legal. Like, for instance, nobody if nobody ever stiffs me. If the if load pays $500 and they think I crush their exhaust, then they need to give me $500. That's, like, clearly in my terms. And I, I can't imagine a judge not believing someone should have to pay for services rendered before filing a claim. And that's exactly what my terms say. So it's just, like, keep the horse in front of the cart kind of thing. Well, and here's the thing, too, is that I know, I mean, there's just, uh, I, and I, I can see it in the show. I can see it in other shows that I watch. I can hear it on the phone. Brokers and carriers really need to start understanding each other more if we're going to include, if we're going to ever get to customers. Um, uh, there is one thing about brokers terms. Can you agree with this? Anytime it says do not discuss payment with customer, they're like totally taking too much money from your load. I actually don't want anybody to know. I agree with you. I actually hate it too. I do hate it. I understand it. I do understand it. But I hate it at the same time because we all know. Listen, it's 2018. We all know when we smell a bad deal. Right. Right? 
Here's one. It you smells guys, like a bad deal. From today. I got a story from today. Um, I tried to book a load for one of the drivers I'm dispatching for, and uh, it was listed for $400, okay? It's only going, it's a Honda Accord going 130 miles. Now, I didn't tell the broker to list it for $400. That's what he has it listed for, right? So I dial the phone real quick, like dispatchers do, and I get the load, and she says, well, let me call you back, which is always a clue that things are going to go weird. Yeah. Um, so I get this call back a few minutes from, I guess, her boss, and the first thing he said to me is, why are you charging so much to take this car? Wow, nice. Think, like, nice. I told her it was $400 or something. It's like, you listed it for $400. Why are you asking me why it costs $400 to ship it? I think I've had that phone call as well. Because she, she messed up and she went to him and blamed it on you. Well, what she did was she put it up. She just wanted to get it out of there. So she probably just put it up for what they were getting. But right. Oh, that's, that's great. I mean, well, that goes to the broker for getting 400 bucks to move a car 130 miles when we could have just called a tow truck and done it for 200 You well, know, I mean, more power to them. But well, still. and here's the problem. The real, many of the real rates are so high that we would think they were wrong. And that's part of the problem is that everybody, not everybody, I hate to talk like black and white and this or that, nobody this. What I mean to say is, so many vehicles really do pay well, and 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 like the like the boiling frog that's conditioned to not know how bad it is. When right. you look at the rates on Central, and everything is so low, and this great paying car comes along, the thought is, cool, we're gonna make all this money. Right. Well, that's that's the um, that's the first thought. I know it, because the problem is we switch it around. Wouldn't we kind of do the same thing? Yeah, but I mean, okay. if I list something personally, okay, I'm, I'm like I say, I'm trying to be an ethical businessman. No one's perfect, but right. I, I, if, if I make a bad deal and I offer you something for four hundred dollars. I don't later turn around and read Nick on it. No, and I agree with you. But I think and I think what we need to look and this is why brokers say that carriers set the price. Because carriers are down here accepting the garbage for so long that if they if something good comes along, it's gonna be priced as garbage. And it's the carrier's fault for wading in the garbage. It's 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 Han Solo's fault for hanging out in the garbage compactor. But that's all, all this broker boy. That's right? why we just, we're... We just dump the garbage and we just sort, try to sort through the top of the pile real quick before it floats because we know everything on the bottom of the can is not worth all. And that's why we're in a Mexican standoff now. This is a Tarantino movie where the carrier and the broker and the dispatcher are all playing good, bad, and the ugly. It's crazy. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. The open game is much different than the enclosed hauler game. You know, it's like the, the, most of the open guys, if they got a lot of cars to move, it's usually auction moves or dealers, and they don't want to pay much. But at least in enclosed, I, you know, I have the opportunity to run into clients that have hundreds of cars um, that are worth enclosed hauling. And typically when they find somebody they like to move their cars, they call you back. So, you know, I, I've had um. One of my clients today is buying a new Ferrari. He called it a T. It's a beautiful car. He showed me the pictures. Um, and he actually was talking to the dealer, and the dealer told him they could free service his Ferrari, but he has to transport the car back and forth. And they said they have their own transporter, which really he's just making up a story that basically they'll list it and you can call someone because he, he's like, well, I've already got a hauler. Paul hauls my cars, and um, you know I'd prefer Paul do it. He's like, oh yeah, we work with Paul all the time, you know. Well, he'll pretty sure we'll pay him to pick up your car. He's just like blowing smoke out of him, trying to get him to, to the hall to, to buy the car. And um, but now I guess he's talked himself in a position like my client relationship can be so strong that um, my client's calling the Ferrari dealer and telling him I'm hauling cars for him now, and he's not buying one. I mean, you know, if you really get the right clients and you do the right job, these people will go to bat for you because some of these guys love their cars. And they love their car haulers just as much. But the open car market and exporter market and stuff, they're just trying to make a dime out of 15 cents or whatever. And it's just way different. I hate it for the open guys sometimes. 
Yeah. And it's a hard game, but, you know, even, like, I've got a driver right now I'm dispatching out of Ohio, and I've been managing to get, he's got a two-car hauler, it's only 12,000 pounds you can put on it, it's 40 feet long, open, and, like, I've got him running $3 a mile, Columbus, Ohio, to St. Louis, and I've got him running $3 a mile coming back to Pittsburgh, and then I got him another $3 a mile from Pittsburgh back to the house in the next three days, like, it's possible. If you really, but you gotta really work to dispatch that kind of thing, and you know it's, it's not always there every day. But I, I love it when I can put loads like that together for them. It's one of the things. I guess I, maybe I just talked about the first thing I like about dispatching tonight. So. Well, and maybe maybe you know it's interesting as as you talk about when when you talk about load boards versus customers. It, it, it really sheds light on the whole living off the load boards should it, we should we should address that when you live off load boards you're in your own category which is right. not the which, category you know, it's a double-edged sword though Jay if a, if a carrier at work is you know I'm a hauler and I'm now dispatching I've got on both sides but it's a double-edged sword because working off the load boards is your freedom you know that's the uh, hey, I'm going to Montana this week and I'm going to take my reset, you know, in Missoula where I want to be because I'm picking this off the board where, um, you know, sometimes you just can't do that otherwise. Right, well, and when you... Like when you take, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, you know, I always give my... every, Every car I pick up, every car I deliver, no matter who it is, I give them a business card and I... so they can call me. And when those guys call me back, it's it's much more difficult. Like, I might be able to get a better rate with my callbacks, but now the guy's asking me to be in Ohio in two weeks. Or, you know, so unless he's prepared to schedule four or six weeks out, sometimes that can be difficult unless you have a small fleet of trucks. If you're just one man and one truck, the better rates are with your callback clients and the clients you book yourself. But then you have to satisfy those those customers, and you can't be everywhere at once. So the load board's a blessing in, in a sense, and obviously it's also a garbage can at times too. It's just, <laughs> sometimes it works for you, sometimes it doesn't. Well, that's the thing is that, and that's why we have to have brokers because who's going to manage the customer that has moves that you can't necessarily accommodate at that moment? Right. I mean, I and, and I and they're the ones doing the customer acquisition cost, you know. And I, I'd love to talk to a broker and see, you know, you take a company like a Nationwide or I mentioned Ship Your Car Now, which I do well with them. But yeah, I mean, they're big. I mean, they. I'd love to know what their customer acquisition cost is. Is it ten dollars? Is it twenty? Is it more? You know, they they do spend money and time on what they do, and that you know that has its value. And you have some brokers are better than others. Well, no, and absolutely, and you know what? I, I really, I, I mean, I, I'm on, I'm on the verge of doing a show. What makes brokering so hard? Um, it won't be next week. It'll probably be in September. But I mean, we are. I think we are starting to see, even in the, even in the live chat with some of the comments during this show, that we're, we're starting to see the ecosystem open up a little bit. Um, we've talked to some car shipping customers, some brokers. Obviously, right now I'm talking about the show, but my my whole point in this is that we are, even in Facebook groups, we're seeing more people communicating where it's been really segmented and distrusting for a long time and people aren't talking. And, I'm, you know, the information's got to get out. Ultimately, it's got to get to the customer. they got to stop expecting the world in exchange for the cheapest rate. You know, when I searched, uh, I went to Google. This is really interesting. I went to Google um, and I typed in, let's go, let's, let's open, I know, I got, I'm, I got wrapped attention here. Okay, so I go to Google, type in car shipping. Right. Scroll down. And what's at the bottom? Searches related to car shipping. Cheap car shipping is number two. So Cheapest. Somebody running web crawlers on keywords. But there's a reason. There's a reason. Cheapest car shipping is number five. There's a reason. Right. 
The reason is that customers are searching for cheap and cheapest car shipping. I, I get that. And that's why, I, I don't know if you saw what I was trying to say earlier. I know I talked a lot, but um, there just seems to be a cap on what a customer is willing to pay. And I know, I know the broker in the chat room mentioned, you know, what, what they really cost or why, why it, you know, it's hard to move cars cross country. It's because nobody wants to pay more than like $1,500 to do that, maybe, you know. 1500 I agree. That's a pretty good number. Because it, well, it, it, if you put yourself in the shoes of the client, if you had a car, and I, let's say you bought a Subaru WRX, decent little $40,000 rally car, um, you know, you're really not trying to spend more than that to move it. It's, and I could see, you know, not many people have much more than that to spend. Obviously, the brokers are still taking a fee above that also. But um, it's it, it, but from a car carrier perspective, it's not worth the money to haul across country for fifteen hundred dollars because um, a, it's like a ceiling that the car prices hit. You know, the the guy that needs to go from the East Coast to Dallas is still willing to pay fifteen hundred dollars. The same as the guy going from the East Coast to San Diego, he's willing to pay fifteen hundred dollars. It's just it's a number in the client's mind that they're not going to pay more than that to move their car. But there, there comes a point where it just stops making sense to carry them that far. When, you know, I mean, if I can go to Dallas for the same money, I'm going to stop in Dallas, offload my vehicles, load some new ones, and then go to San Diego. And now I'm doing 2500 a car, basically, or per spot Absol on my trailer. Absolutely. I, I do the same thing. If, if the driver said, I want to go from New York to San Diego, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to look for cars going to Texas. I'm not looking all the way to California because I know that the rate's going to drop off and we're all going to wonder why we're doing it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've been trying to put a six car hauler together in clothes and you know, I'm, I don't want to take less than say 2,300 bucks per vehicle and maybe run from East to West coast. Um, but I probably wouldn't even load my whole trailer for that. I would, I would probably still leave a couple of spots open and, find some two thousand dollar loads halfway and, and reload the back part of the trailer or something you know you just got to make you got to make money and it doesn't pay to keep driving across the country and it takes five days to get paid and in those five days you're racking up fuel costs and spending money and you get to the other side of the country and like the gentleman said earlier uh, there's no money there and they're like wondering how to pay you and everything else it's just uh it's not it's not always fun um, and the only way I would ever want to haul cars for those kind of prices is if somebody's got a contract with like Mannheim or something that, that I can pull cars out of 24 hours a day and then you just buy a couple, three trucks and keep them moving all day. But other than that, why would you ever want to carry for those rates? And it's what, like, well, one or two car operations. What's interesting is, so I think one of the problems is we're up here at upper level economics. We're, this is like boardroom talk. This is, you know, numbers, this and that. But when we come down to street level and dealing with the all the inaccurate information, all the actual costs, all the actual time it takes for just one car to actually get picked up, actually delivered, and, I mean, the, the minutia of what the car hauler actually goes through becomes so intense that the talk at the you know oh well th we could do it for x amount of dollars almost becomes either unrealistic irrelevant or just not not uh profitable enough yeah and yeah we're definitely in this to make money and uh, anytime if we could put a broker in a truck and have him try to drive 11 hours in a 14 hour day and do it for five days straight to get to san diego for 1300 bucks or i had a guy I had a guy call one of my drivers last week, a broker, um, on the West Coast, and say, oh, man, I got cars to move, you know, have your dispatcher call me, tell him to do this, you know, and like you say, look, now I got now I got a driver on the phone, I'm trying to dispatch, and he's talking to me about some broker that's offering in cars. It's like a waste, I, I'm like, dude, it's a waste of my time. If he calls you, it's because it sucks. So I, I get him to call the broker, and the broker offers him a truck going from San Diego to Atlanta for $800. Like, that's just crazy. What's that, 30 some cent a mile? Well, and that's the thing is, I mean, it just, just V. Drew just posted, Pacific Northwest to New England and backs, 1500 to 1800 
California to Florida is twelve hundred for he he just posted California to Florida twelve hundred for a sedan. That ain't that ain't enough money. I I, I agree with you. Bike last week from Charlotte to Dallas for a thousand dollars for one motorcycle. I, I agree. I would never touch that. Yeah, no, I would never book a car for twelve hundred from California to Florida. Can you, can you do the searches like I do? Because I'm an enclosed guy. I mean. Is there any way you could put it an uh, enclosed search for anything in the country, like all, origin all, destination all, sure. minimum pay one dollar? I just see what's up there. Yeah, enclosed, right? Yeah, I mean this. This is what I do, and you know, if I'm sitting at the house next week and I decide I'm going to go somewhere, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go all, all, anywhere in the U.S. enclosed, or actually, I mean, just do anything, open or enclosed. I don't care as long as it pays more than a buck. This is where I start my load. That's and that's it. And I call this well. I call this route scouting. It's what I call this, um, right. and I call this aggressive route scouting, um, because yeah, you're looking. This is basically a gold bar search. <laughs> when I get real aggressive, we just go ahead and check motorcycles paying more than a dollar. And oh. I start with that. I start loading the bikes up. You know, you get a couple bikes. Here's an important part. 80, 90 cent a mile a piece, and you put them side by side, takes up the space of one car. On on an aggressive load bar search, not only do you do a dollar minimum, but you do a minimum total pay. So you don't see yeah, like well, yeah, $45 course, yeah. cars. If I'm going to go, say, 1,500 miles, I'm going to want, you know, an X amount of dollar minimum, sure. So I put $500 minimum. That'll work. Boy, it's really got to think on this one. Right. They're like, man, yeah, nobody ever asks all this. <laughs> I can already tell you right now, like, you're going to, well, since you've got trailer type on, if you, if you did tick trailer type to enclose, it wouldn't have but maybe 300 listings in the entire United States. And I believe that, which is not good. But that's a load, but it's a load board. Yeah, it's a much different market. And a lot of brokers are listing the better vehicles as open or enclosed or open. Sometimes you can still find them um, because they're just trying to get these things moved. And honestly, I mean, it's not that impressive. And as you can guess, it's mostly trucks and uh, scissor lifts. All right, here's the other thing I do, Jake, is I just do price, price on my search filter. You scroll up and run it price, price, and just put the highest paying load right on the top. Oh, okay. That's Does pretty, that sense? That's yeah. That's what I do. I put them, I don't care how far they go, I just want to know how much money they pay. You know, it's interesting. I've stopped playing with those filters because... I mean, it's such a rat race. Um, I don't play with them. They're always on price, price. Okay, you leave them there. Can you can you do that on Central Dispatch? Can you leave them? Yeah, and then. Um, okay. Well, if, yeah, if you do it in this in that in that screen, you can. And then, um, yeah, price, price, and just put them in order of who's paying the money. I mean, that's what we're looking for is the money, right? Awesome. Hey, check this out. Whoop Data says learning a lot here today. That is awesome, man. You know what? That is my goal every show. Whether you agree, disagree, I hey, want you to learn things. Up. Yeah, man. Thank Five you. Five vehicles, $15,000 from I St. Louis to Miami. Okay. There we go right there. Okay. Yeah, but, I and I, I agree with you. What kind of cars, before I click the drop down, is this a mix mix? No, it's not a mix mix. Thank goodness. What kind of vehicles do you think they are, though? Mix, I've never booked a mixed mix in my life. It scares, <laughs> it scares me so bad. They have to at least give me a, a maximum total weight of their mixed mix. Have you ever booked an actual pickup, actual delivery load? I scheduled one once, but um, to haul some prototypes. <laughs> Volvo, Volvo brings their prototypes into the Port of Savannah and up in New York. They have warehouses on um, both sides of the East Coast. Um, and yeah, they were, I had a load where they wanted me to be at a boat at 8 a.m. and to be at the proving grounds in Arizona by 5 p.m. three days, four days later. But they need, I mean, I, I charged them $4,000 to carry one car to Arizona. That, nice. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, okay, and I'm taking penalties. Any, anything I miss, I'm going to get penalized. So it's on me to collect the four grand by doing what they want. That's pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to click the drop down, but I'm going to guess... St. Louis to Miami. Oh, it's Wentzville, which I believe is... That's very interesting that it's not yeah, the Mix perfect, Mix Jay. broker. 
I wish I had a car. I wish I had my collar. I'd be all over it. Okay, I'd but eating barbecue in St. Louis and sitting on the beach in Miami. I'm telling. I don't think you can. I got. I, I. I will bet. I will bet you two comments in the in the complaint mug that it's not something you could haul on a five car hauler. Well, drop. Uh, I bet you it's five trucks. Yep. Because Wentzville, I believe it's at the rail yard. I'm going to go with five trucks. Or, it might be because it's an four, open carry, so it might be five trucks on a nine car. Four trucks and an SUV, minimum. Three trucks, minimum. All right, here we go. Oh, my God. What do you got? <laughs> that's, that's just the open load. That's pretty good. That's uh, what? Some of these open guys better jump on that. We should be calling them right now. Uh, let me tell you. I can tell you why. What is it, a school bus? Five school buses? It's one concrete mixer five times. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't even fit that on a hauler. I mean, they don't make a hauler to haul that. Five times 13,000, and they're probably, uh, it's, it's probably not shipping weight. That's probably I mean, like. Actually, it says it says one concrete mixer. They give you the length, thirty foot long, eight foot wide, twelve foot high, thirteen thousand pounds, and then it just says parentheses five. That's a waste of our time, right there. That is unbelievable. I'm so glad we did that. What about take it on and get rid of the open stuff so we can get the cranes and the cement trucks out of there and let's see what a real like, it's a cement truck. God, that's awesome. You know there's somebody like, oh, man, I'm going to try and get it. <laughs> you're going to make five trips to get that. How about this? Three F-550 extended cabs with utility beds, paying 2100 each. I don't even well, know. That. I'm, not, I'm not sure. What okay, here you. Load? All right, here you go. South Dakota to Idaho, four units enclosed trailer for six grand. South Dakota to Idaho. Yeah. Let's go to South Dakota. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's Let, where I want to be. Stuff like that. Road Runner, I've never had a problem with those guys. No, either. I haven't either. You know what? Honestly, most brokers. I'm just going to stop there. I'm just going to say most brokers. That way I'm not lying or telling the truth. I mean, at a minimum, if they want me to say something nice about them, they need to pay their bills. And roadrunners always pay their bills. Immediately. Yeah. So. No, I, I haven't had a problem with it. And I just clicked on crappy maps, and we got, uh, so it's it's like, it's between Pierre and Sioux Falls. It's not it's a big, like, you could get to Sioux Falls. And it it's goes. Days out. You can schedule it two weeks away. That's beautiful. And it goes north of Salt Lake City. That is a good. So what? What? What's it take to get? I mean, do you have a four car enclosed? Not at the moment. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to build to that. It's with the enclosed cars are worth so much more money. You, you know, with Progressive cap and insurance out at two hundred fifty thousand, you have to build a reputation to to load that. You, you don't just buy a truck it can haul four cars and call those people up and expect them to dispatch it it's just not going to happen you gotta you gotta build to that and um depending on the vehicles you know some companies will bind policies above 250 with you with their brokerage firm but really you want to um have that kind of car going yourself like at least a million bucks and it takes it's going to take you a year or two to build to that you, um, you know in my, in my case i did six months with progressive at, um, you know, starting out, and I called him back and tried to get him to rewrite a policy. And so, after a hundred or so loads with no insurance claims, they offered to um, refer me to a local agent to write me a cargo policy above two hundred and fifty thousand. I don't know how far they'll go out doing that. But. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to take us back into dispatching because I'm going to tell you this: even at this dollar a mile, which sh sh is not that crazy. Okay, even though it's spat out um, 1,600 plus listings, honestly, I, I don't think I could book hardly any of this. I, and, could, book, I could book almost no. anything on this list. Other than, no. Other than nationwide. No, you I, can't. I've got a Listen. good review from Nationwide. Listen. And I've loaded with them, but it's I can't not, necessarily call them. Sometimes they're just. No. Won't give it to me. Here's what I'm talking about Model Home. 
Caspian houseboat, truck crane, duck truck, Sundance. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying is these are not things you can haul. This isn't this is a hot shot flatbed list at this point. These aren't even like a dollar a mile's not that crazy if you're the customer. But you I've won't got, find it listed on Central Dispatch and take it as a car. Hard to find uh, like thirty five like three fifty F three fifties brand new and fleet vehicles for a buck fifty a mile. I know, but what I'm saying is you're not gonna let me point make my point, and that's okay, I don't worry about it. Well, you're saying most of this stuff is more like flatbed loads, and I get that. It really, I mean, this is not even car hauler stuff now. This is like, yeah, these are flatbed loads. What's a local motors rally fighter? That looks interesting. Well, so I want to say this. I want to come back to the what makes dispatching so hard, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna let you go in a few minutes, Paul. But tell me a story. What makes dispatching so hard? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. It's like getting wedged between uh, two fighting bulls, <laughs> between the broker and the carrier and the clients. That's it's a misinformation. That's a very uh, good feeling. The thing I hate the most about dispatching Jay is anxiety that I have, especially when I take on a new carrier and I'm trying to. Get, I really want these guys to succeed, and when they work with me, I, it means everything to me that they do well. And so, like you say, there's. There is some anxiety, just like, did I get them enough money here? Did I let them down? Did I send them to the wrong place? And, I, you know, I'm really taking responsibility for these guys' ability to get their business up and running. And I want to be able to not only do that for them, but at the same time, I also want them to learn how to do what I'm doing because there's, I, I don't want there to be a day where I just, like, end up not being able to work with them for whatever reason, and then they don't know that side of the game. Um, I'm almost to the point where I think, I think every new carrier should at least, um, maybe it's easier, I should say, if I book their first load ever, but I think every new carrier should pick up the phone and book their first load, and that way they would, might at least realize how difficult it can be. That's actually, I mean, you, yep, that's what... When you get that first load booked, you're like, wow, okay, we're moving, but until you can get that first load booked, it's... It's really hard to get anything, you know, and um, I don't yeah. think some of these guys from the from the carrier side working with them, I don't think some of these guys realize how difficult it is to book your first load unless they've done it. And from the broker side, it's like we're not delivering pizzas and um, we like to get paid and we don't like to call you back to get paid. And, you know, we just want to know the truth when we show up. It's like like today we picked up a we were supposed to pick up a cart and it wasn't listed as an in-op. We get there and find out it's been stored for two years and wasn't running when it arrived and it's on four flat tires and, you know, that kind of stuff just wastes everybody's time and money, the broker's money, the client's money, and uh, it's very frustrating. It makes our job suck. And if you just told us the truth before we got there, we would have made sure it was done properly and we'd all, we'd all get along a little better. And that happens so much. Oh, my gosh. The non-surprise in-ops happen regularly it's ridiculous how i mean how i don't mind a little bit of like whoops we you know wasn't trying to do that but so much of it just seems to be like trying to get things moved and you're um, people it's... aren't being ethical no and there's when you go to a, when you go somewhere to pick up a car and they don't tell you it's an in-op and you get there and it's a storage facility and the guy that runs the storage facility tells you the car has been there for two years <laughs> exactly Somebody yeah. knew. Yeah, exactly. It's like but it's like finding a body in the truck. The guy asks, when are you, what are new carriers, when we don't deal with the new carriers, you take the hit, you suck it up. It's like trying to um, get a date at the bar and girls turn you down all day, but you keep trying until you find the one you want. And, and like I said, eventually you get that first load and everything flips and you're moving down the road and you're not, you're not full on running. You know, you're not flying like an eagle, but you're you're at least starting that, that path to where you get your reputation built. And, and totally yeah. the reputations are built. It's, a, it's very frustrating to be a new carrier. And yeah, yeah, and expensive. Like any, anything worse than dispatching, it's... Being a new carrier. Being a new carrier. I totally over agree. Over again, every time I take on a new carrier, because I already dealt with that frustration with my company, and it took me a long time to build my reputation. 
And it was like the most frustrating thing I did in this in this business. And then when you start dispatching for guys, you you really take on the most frustrating part, which is trying to book new carriers without a reputation, which it's just so aggravating. Oh but it's man, necessary. And in a sense, when I accomplish that, it's one of the the things I, I like to be able to do because I want to help these guys. So, but I also want them to know how to do it. So, yep, whatever it takes to get to that point. Well, listen, Paul, I appreciate, uh, again, all your input tonight. Um, you have become, I think you're probably my most regular guest at this point. And the last couple weeks. I mean, Hot Shot Dave's your best, most regular. Well, okay, so you're tied, you're tied for second with Hot Shot Dave, but I mean, I really, I like having you on the show I think it's really interesting, so I wouldn't put too much uh, weight on uh, your responses versus your comments. Don't That's read, cool. don't read I into it. That. Yeah, um, no, don't read into it. It means a lot to me, and I, you know, I just I want everybody to do well. Um, it's not always easy to teach people how to come in and, and be your competition, but I am willing to do it. And with with the amount of cars we have to move, I think we need more haulers, and I hope all these guys are successful that are trying to get in this business. And I agree. Anybody that wants to do enclosed, it's much different than than open. And I'm, you know, I'm serious when I say start with a really small hauler because you won't get the cars booked until you prove that reputation. So start small and move up, and that's probably the best advice I can give you. And be the guy that books your first load, even if you plan to have a dispatcher. Make sure you know what he's doing and, and book your first load. It's very frustrating and it sucks, but it should be your responsibility. I, I agree with that. Can people email you if they want to? Of course. Um, they can reach me at Max Auto Hauler, M A C S, like motorcycle and car shipping, Auto Hauler at Gmail. Cool. Um, I just put yeah, it into the I, live chat. It's not as much fun as Dave. Dave's way more cooler. But if you ever want oh, to hear brother. the truth and, and talk to somebody sincere that will tell you exactly what's on his mind, you're always welcome to call me and I'll tell you straight everything Dude, I think you, about this business. You always shoot it straight, man. I'm telling you. I love having you on the show. And for that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pull out two comments. Once the load comes together, getting the driver all the information and then putting loads in order for them. How about that? And how about I'm not your claim I, I'm not your claim for damages legal team. Quit destroying the cars you load. Hey, I, I gave you that. <laughs> I don't mind being your claim to damages legal team, but I can't spend all day just talking there dealing with one person. I'm, I can't be their person. I try to help them as I can, but I, I can't just talk on the phone all day. I gotta no. do other things and just back and work. Yeah, I hear you man. Well listen man, th hey, thank you I'll so you much. Go. I'll be in touch with you. All right, well, I look forward to the rest of the show. You guys have fun. Thanks, Paul. All right, take care. All right, see you, bye. All right, we got one more caller. We're going to talk to one more dispatcher. We are going to do what makes brokering so hard, what makes car hauling so hard, what makes car shipping so hard? This is a series. Hello? Hey, what's up, Davison? Hey, Do you have a few minutes for me? What? Do you have a few minutes for me? Yes, I do. All right, cool. I'll just keep you for a few minutes because I know it's late. But I wanted to, I mean, did, did you have you seen, you? I know you've been in the chat. Have you seen my top ten? What makes dispatching so hard? Yes, I did. And so, do you? How about this? I've liked the answer. This. Do you have any stories? Do you have any horror stories to share? Horror stories to share. Oh, and do this. Turn the sound down on your computer. Otherwise, we're going to hear ourselves. Okay. I got it. All right. Cool. And by the way, while you're, uh, while, we're, while, because we got, to, I asked you to share a horror story. All right, here, I'm going to pull another. Maybe you've got one in here. Well, I know, I know you've got, I know you got more than one in here. I got all kinds of people's complaints. So let's see. All right, we got the driver always wants you to get more money for the load. True or false? 
truth. <laughs> All right. Let's do that. We're going to do true or false. It's great to work inside, but only if you are paid enough to turn the AC on. Can't do that if you stiff me on payment. What? Um, so I'm going to I'm going to rephrase that. Is it hard to get paid as a dispatcher? Not really. Not really. <laughs> have you ever how about, have you ever had a driver stiff you? No, I have not. You have not? Oh, wow. You're lucky. I've had several. Have you ever had a broker stiff a driver? Really I really get lucky because there is no contract whatsoever, you know? All right. Have you ever had a, have you ever had a broker stiff a driver? Uh, have I had a what? Have you, ever, have you ever heard of a broker not paying a driver? Uh, yes. Okay, so the broker hasn't paid the driver, but you've always had your drivers pay you as a dispatcher. Man, you're lucky. I've been stiffed thousands of dollars. Truth. I have been stiffed thousands of dollars by drivers. That's a true statement. That is a true statement. Um, if a load pays good, it's nearly impossible to just book it. True or false? So the, here's the, I'm going to rephrase it. If a load pays good, are you always able to book it? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, right? But sometimes if the load pays too good, what happens? Can you repeat the question? If the load pays too good, what happens? Well, uh, something is not right. So I can't hear. I'm trying to turn you up. Are you? Are you? On, am I on speakerphone? Or are you? Are you holding a handset? Uh, you okay. Yeah, Paul. He's got it. He's gonna move his phone. Oh, he's gonna. He's gonna move his phone. I'm gonna read another complaint read in the another meantime. Complaint. All right, here we go. Right, here we go. Feel free to call him yourself. Call so you yourself. <laughs> okay. Feel free to call him yourself. So you can realize what I just told you is true. He calls and they offer him three cars. Okay, this one's too specific. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. I hear you a little better. Yep. All right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Irvine. All right, here we go. Yes, the... Yes, the Rocky Mountains are hilly. This is why I sent you the long way, which is flat. That's interesting. All right, let me let me pull up another one. All right, here we go. All right. You feel like you have to become someone's new best friend to get the good paying loads. You ever had that happen? No. Nope. You feel I I think I wrote this one. You feel like you have to become someone's new best friend to get the good paying loads. Yeah, not really. No, I, I wrote that one. Um, that's good, man. You're doing good. You're doing better than me. Um, you try to negotiate a better rate, but the broker or shipper always says, last time I paid that price, so I'm not raising it. I hear that a lot. Oh, my gosh. That stupid compare button is awful. This dumb compare button right here some brokers hit that constantly oh well you know well that's what it paid last time well you know what this is a different car this is a different day different customer it's a total it could be a totally different circumstance just because it's on the sure. stinking compare button doesn't tell you anything other than yeah fine your make model easy pizza hot hot fresh pizza and the in the delivery driver see whatever the point is the compare button means very little it is not gospel by the way, what if everybody else did haul it for cheap? Does that mean you have to suffer the same fate? It's ridiculous. It, I, I hate the comparable. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, if everyone hauls for a cheap price, they won't make enough money to pay their expenses. They'll go out of business. I, of all the dumb things that are not on Central Dispatch or are on Central Dispatch... Some would say I should have said should instead of wouldn't. 
But the stupid compare button has got to be one of the worst things on this thing. Not to mention crappy maps. I think both buttons need to go. All right. Or be, or be revamped. Okay. I think, but that would probably cost an extra $100 a month. I think the DOT should require CDL for every driver. That way the newbies won't turn down the business by accepting cheap loads just to get them moving. Ooh, that's a very interesting. True. Man, it, you know what? Because non-CDL sucks to book for. There, I said it. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. It is true. It's just that, you know, people don't want to tell you, but it is true. Some drivers think a certain dispatch percentage is too high, but they don't want a dispatcher that goes throughout the day to get his truck full, but they don't want, but the, oh, some drivers think a, a certain dispatch percentage is too high, but they don't know what dispatchers go through to get the truck full. It's probably, probably true. Probably true. Yeah, it's very really true. That's <laughs> true. It is. If the load pays, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta search for the load. You gotta negotiate the rates, and you know a lot of you doing that. Other drivers is calling you to uh, get some help with a certain load that is having a problem with, and then uh, you know you book that load, and then you verify. Driver keeps calling you. Hey, where's the road? Where's the road? I'm empty, or I need to know uh, what load you got for me, because I need to know what's gonna, what I'm gonna do tomorrow, and all that stuff. And uh, sometimes the driver calls. Oh, I found a load here. Uh, you think you can call them up and get a, a better price on this? Oh yeah, I'll try it. I'll do my best. And okay, go ahead. I'll. Uh, I'll be in the line. You can use the other phone to uh, to call around in that load. And, and by the time, you know, he's on the line, I, uh, you know, I lose time doing other stuff while I'm on the phone trying to book a load because I'm giving attention to this driver. And that's really tough. I mean, like I, uh, like I put in the comments today, if you want more attention, pay more. <laughs> I like that. If you want more attention, pay more. I mean, true. It is. It's totally true. Uh, sometimes you lose time calling on a load posted for more than one or two days, but it's already been covered and missed that load, and you another, another but it's already been covered, and you, and you might have missed a load that you could have got booked. It's true. There, you know, it's interesting. As a dispatcher, we have instincts about, uh, you know what, That's I, I probably wouldn't waste my time on it. But, you know, if it looks so good and then the driver wants you to call it, and now you're calling this person, that person, and you find out, man, it's just a, it's, what a waste of time. You know? Yeah, that, it, I mean, the it's driver awful. looks it up. Oh, I've got this load here. I've been posted for two days. Uh, why you don't call and uh, uh, try to get a better price? And I call, oh, the, the car already got picked up. I have to take it off the center. Yeah, or how about how about when you know, you know that the posted rate is fine. You just want to book it. But they keep asking you to ask for more money. Uh-huh. And you know you're going to you're gonna lose it. I mean, I hate that. I hate it when I lose a load. I, I hate it when I miss a load. Because we're so hell-bent on asking for more, and it's already listed for something that, okay, it's not the greatest, but it, it is, it's good enough, and it's within what we normally book. Let's just book it, man. We don't need to ask for a gold bar every time. True. That's uh, really true. It is true. It's unfortunate. And I want more money, because I know if they make more money, I, I make more money, but sometimes... It's not going to work out. And the broker, <coughs> you've had brokers say, it already pays good. No. Click. I've had that happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So, listen, man, here's the deal. I am coming up on three hours, which is kind of my end time. So, um, is there anything you wanted to add or anything like that? Wow, I went through a lot of dispatch. There's still some in here. Went through a lot of dispatching problems tonight. Is there anything you want to add? Well, some brokers or shippers just don't have memories at all. Oh, yeah. You call them up, you try to book a load, and you ask for more, and, it, and they just say, oh, I don't have time for this back and forth. Just say you want it or not. I mean, you call in, you try to negotiate, and, it just, and the guy just being rude with you on the phone. Like, uh, you know, it's just ridiculous. I'm gonna I'm gonna even go further. I actually I had a broker recently who then got really upset with me, and when I called to book the load, she's like, "Oh, honey, oh, sweetie, oh, all the." I'm like, "Okay, this is BS. There's no reason to call me honey and sweetie unless there's something else at play here." Well, it turns out she guaranteed easy peasy, promise squeezy. And that didn't happen. And then, oh man, it was all the opposite of oh honey and oh sweetie. It goes into the manners that you're talking. Just be professional. It, you know what? If you don't want to negotiate, say I can't negotiate or whatever. But there's no need for this game, this poker face that you've learned to play, and just demean, humiliate, and eliminate. It's not. It's not that. It's this is not rugby. I'm just trying to book a car. Mm hmm True. <laughs> All right. Oh, man, it's really, it's really tough. It is, man, it really, it's, it's tough. tough. It is tough, man. It is tough. Another thing that is, I, uh, I don't want, I'm going to, now I'm going to let you go, but. Yeah. Uh, another thing that is really difficult when you call to verify vehicles that it's on dealerships. You call them and oh I'm gonna transfer it to you to your uh, the person in charge. And then the, the calls go through. Oh I'm calling to pick up a lease return and oh I'm gonna transfer it to uh, someone in charge. <laughs> Transferring and the drivers sometimes they think that we're not even called. Total. I, I know exactly what you mean. And then when we call and make the appointment, the driver gets there and just sit there for an hour. No or more. Dealerships. With his car. Yes. To, uh, be ready. Dealerships are frustrating, and not only are they like that, but they won't negotiate hardly at all. When they list the load, some will. But I agree, dealerships are a difficult animal. But at least. It has all four tires. Uh -huh. Am I right? Right. Yes. You know what happened last time? The driver went up to Mannheim to pick up a car, and um, and I called ahead to verify in the vehicle that the driver would be there to pick it up. The driver was running around a lot, you know, kind of looking for the car. After two hours, he found out the car was in, inside of the showroom right now. Yeah, <laughs> I think I've had that happen before. The car is in the showroom. Well, and you and you would have known that if you could have got somebody on the phone. So, all right. Well, listen, man. I appreciate you joining me tonight. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm really glad we got a chance to talk on the phone. And this was the right show to have you on. So um, uh -huh. I'm going to let you go. I want to thank you. And um, I hope that tomorrow brings a better dispatching day for you. Uh, thank you for, uh, for your time. Thank you for calling. Yeah, man. And um, looking forward to talking to you more. All right. Sounds good, man. Thanks so much. You have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. See ya. All right. All right, guys. We're at three hours. I got to say goodnight. I got to let you go. This is craziness. Um, you know that I've got, I've got the Auto Transport Intel YouTube site. That's where you're at now. You know you can connect with me on Facebook. 
All right, cool. Got somebody there now. Oh yeah, and I've been man, I've been I've been actively talking to a lot of people in a lot of different groups, um, and because I'm trying to grow the interviews, grow the show. Um, you know, you can go to autotransportintel.com, and that's where you're gonna read uh, the blog posts. Um, and I I blog I, I blog post a lot of the videos. It's that up on YouTube, it's the video obviously, and then uh, if you go to the blog post. Sometimes I write a little extra up there. Um, and then I've got the Instagram channel. Um, so, you know, a lot is happening up on Instagram, which is cool. Those are kind of, that's actually got unique content from YouTube, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's, it's cross-promotional. Um, I signed up on Twitch. I signed up on Patreon. So I'm just going to keep growing, being uh, as many social media platforms as possible. Because I have learned that we don't know exactly where this is all headed media wise ecosystem 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 wise there are still some unknowns especially when you get into driverless vehicles etc so um i think that this is an interesting time there's still a lot to learn um, a lot to cover and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep up with you guys as much as I can So thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for the likes comments shares the subscriptions And if you're interested in a channel package, go ahead and let me know And I'm gonna say good night. I'm gonna start up the car hauler here. I started it up. I have double clicked the video Yep, there's the music and I will see you guys Next Tuesday, I don't know what we're doing, but I will see you then. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Bye-bye.